7.05 p.m. New York Mets taking the Miami Marlins. Yankees on Sirius 209, XM 176, and Internet 858. Marlins on Internet 854. 7.07 p.m. Toronto Blue Jays taking the Seattle Mariners. Blue Jays on Sirius, Nick Sum Channels 89, Internet 868. Mariners on Internet 864. 7.20 p.m. Atlanta Braves take on the New York Mets. Braves on Sirius 106, XM 178, and Internet 841. Mets on Internet 857. 7.40 p.m. Minnesota Twins face the LA Dodgers. Twins on Sirius 85, XM 181, and Internet 856. Dodgers on Internet 853. Spanish feed on Internet 870. 7.40 p.m. Kansas City Royals take on the Houston Astros. Royals on Sirius 119, XM 180, and Internet 851. Astros on Internet 850. 7.45 7.45 p.m. St. Louis Cardinals take on the Philadelphia Phillies. Cardinals on Sirius 98, XM 179, and Internet 865. Phillies on Internet 860. 8.05 p.m. Texas Rangers face the Oakland A's. Rangers on Sirius 99, XM 183, and Internet 867. A's on Internet 859. Spanish feed on Sirius 108, XM 182, and Internet 871. 8.40 p.m. Colorado Rockies take on the Arizona Diamondbacks. Rockies on Sirius 132, XM 184, and Internet 848. Diamondbacks on Internet 840. 9.38 p.m. LA Angels take on the Tampa Bay Rays. Angels on Sirius 146, XM 186, and Internet 852. Rays on Internet 866. 9.45 p.m. San Francisco Giants take on the Washington Nationals. Giants on Sirius 211, XM 185, and Internet 863. Nationals on Internet 869. 10.05 p.m., San Diego Padres take on the Chicago Cubs. Padres on Sirius and XM Channels 89, Internet 862. Cubs on Internet 844. I'm Frank Trachtenberg with your Sirius XM MLB schedule for Tuesday, April the 9th. All times are Eastern, and please remember, all games, times, and channels are subject to change. Check SiriusXM.com for the latest updates. In Major League Baseball, 12.35 p.m., Pittsburgh Pirates take on the Detroit Tigers. Pirates on Sirius 208, XM 175, and Internet 861. Tigers on Internet 849. 2.10 2.10 p.m. Boston Red Sox take on the Baltimore Orioles. Red Sox on Sirius 209, XM 176, and Internet 843. Orioles on Internet 842. 6.10 p.m. Cleveland Guardians take on the Chicago White Sox. Guardians on Sirius 210, XM 177, and Internet 847. White Sox on Internet 845. 6.40 p.m. Cincinnati Reds take on the Milwaukee Brewers. Reds on Sirius 208, XM 175, and Internet 846. Brewers on Internet 855. 7.05 p.m. New York Mets take on the Miami Marlins. Yankees on Sirius 209, XM 176, and Internet 858. Marlins on Internet 854. 7.07 7.07 p.m. Toronto Blue Jays take on the Seattle Mariners. Blue Jays on Sirius, Nick Sum Channels 89, Internet 868. Mariners on Internet 864. 7.20 p.m. Atlanta Braves take on the New York Mets. Braves on Sirius 106, XM 178, and Internet 841. Mets on Internet 857. 7.40 p.m. Minnesota Twins face the LA Dodgers. Twins on Sirius 85, XM 181, and Internet 856. Dodgers on Internet 853. Spanish feed on Internet 870. 7.40 p.m. Kansas City Royals take on the Houston Astros. Royals on Sirius 119, XM 180, and Internet 851. Astros on Internet 850. 7.45 7.45 p.m. St. Louis Cardinals take on the Philadelphia Phillies. Cardinals on Sirius 98, XM 179, and Internet 865. Phillies on Internet 860. The PGA Tour comes to life on Sirius XM. It's your destination for everything on the tour. Hear live, hole-by-hole coverage and expert analysis. PGA Tour Radio, Sirius XM 92. MLB Network Radio host Xavier Scruggs believes Juan Soto of the New York Yankees is the perfect fit in the Yankee lineup. Fans getting an opportunity to see Soto take at bats. These Yankees fans now that get to watch Soto on a daily basis will appreciate his ability to hone in on exactly what he's looking for. And that's ultimately the difference between him and every other player in the major leagues is he is so hyper-focused on not swinging at a pitch outside of his zone. He may give up two strikes in the at-bat, but he is going to wait for you to make that mistake, and he's going to make you pay, and he doesn't have to do it by hitting a home run. We saw it multiple times this weekend being able to use the whole field. Yesterday against the game's best closer and Josh Hader, just taking that line drive the other way to plate the go-ahead run, uh, the appreciation for what he's done to already kind of acclimate himself into this lineup. And we saw this in spring training, too. Like, he was already on his own power stroke getting it going. Um, he's done an amazing job. You think about how important that is, too, with Judge not quite getting himself going yet. If they had this same situation last year with Judge struggling or Judge out of the lineup, you, you didn't know who was going to step up. 
Sirius XM has soccer covered end to end. Sirius XM FC. Hear live play by play and talk shows hosted by legends of the game. It's Sirius XM FC on Channel 157. I am Frank Trachtenberg with your Sirius XM MLB schedule for Tuesday, April the 9th. All times are Eastern, and please remember, all games, times, and channels are subject to change. Check SiriusXM.com for the latest updates. In Major League Baseball, 12.35 p.m., Pittsburgh Pirates take on the Detroit Tigers. Pirates on Sirius 208, XM 175, and Internet 861. Tigers on Internet 849. 2.10 2.10 p.m. Boston Red Sox take on the Baltimore Orioles. Red Sox on Sirius 209, XM 176, and Internet 843. Orioles on Internet 842. 6.10 p.m. Cleveland Guardians take on the Chicago White Sox. Guardians on Sirius 210, XM 177, and Internet 847. White Sox on Internet 845. 6.40 p.m. Cincinnati Reds take on the Milwaukee Brewers. Reds on Sirius 208, XM 175, and Internet 846. Brewers on Internet 855. 7.05 p.m. New York Mets take on the Miami Marlins. Yankees on Sirius 209, XM 176, and Internet 858. Marlins on Internet 854. 7.07 p.m. Toronto Blue Jays take on the Seattle Mariners. Blue Jays on Sirius, Nick Sum Channels 89, Internet 868. Mariners on Internet 864. Major League Baseball play-by-play is now on Sirius XM and the Sirius XM app. Why do I love calling this game? Calling this game? Calling this game? Calling this game? Why do I love calling this game? It's because I get a chance to bring some joy into people's lives. Anything can happen on a baseball field. We've got a new game. It's perfectly unscripted theater. Everybody on their feet. Because you never know what you're going to see on a given day. It is Bethlehem at the bank as Bryce Harper has put the Phillies on top. There's just something about baseball on the radio. Something about the way wood hits leather. A swing and a drive to deep left center. The way leather hits dirt. Eddie Mega play. The way a deep fly ball sounds like it's about to change history. I fly ball to center field. It's hit pretty well toward the wall. Until the cleats hit the grass, hit the crushed brick, and then nothing but sky in a silent crowd. Until leather hits leather and 40,000 fans lose their collective minds. In a perfect symphony of chaos. He jumped up on top of the wall, balanced himself, and caught it. The way nothing triumphs a perfectly honest call. The way the right voice can make a moment live forever. Touch them all, Joe. You'll never hit a bigger home run in your life. Outsiders may think this is just two teams. The ball, a bat, and a microphone. But no. For over a hundred years, this has been the soundtrack of the American pastime. He struck it out looking. It's over. It's over. The Rangers have won the World Series. The soundtrack of summer. This is Major League Baseball on the radio. Right now on Sirius XM. All right. Coming in five. Get ready to play. Four. Get up! Get up! Three. Can you believe it? Put your seatbelt on. Wow. My goodness. Major League Baseball play-by-play is now on Sirius XM and the Sirius XM app. The Busted Open Podcast is now available on YouTube. This is Dave LaGreca, host of Busted Open, the number one pro wrestling show on the planet. You can now watch and listen to the award-winning Busted Open Podcast every single day on YouTube. Our best interviews, behind-the-scenes access, and some of our best content from the past. All available right now when you go to YouTube.com slash at Busted Open Podcast. Subscribe right now. The Masters is on Sirius XM. Has pace, working up to the hole, needs to turn. It turned all right. It turned right into the cup for John Rahm. That's a birdie. Hi, this is Mike Tirico. Hear every incredible shot in all the dramatic moments as the best golfers in the world vie for the coveted green jacket. Everyone at Amen Corner stands and appreciates the great Tiger Woods. Hear the Masters exclusively on Sirius XM, on Masters Radio Channel 92 in the car, and on the all-new Sirius XM app. Get ready for the 2024 NFL Draft on Sirius XM NFL Radio. Touchdown, Caleb Williams. Catch exclusive interviews with the top prospects as they begin their journey to the NFL. And hear pick-by-pick coverage of the 2024 Draft from Detroit. With the first pick, the Chicago Bears select. Your home for the 2024 NFL Draft is Sirius XM NFL Radio Channel 88 in the car. And on the all-new Sirius XM app. 
You love listening to baseball. You love talking about baseball, and so do we. That's why Sirius XM has the only channel on the radio dedicated to baseball 24-7. It's MLB Network Radio, Sirius XM Channel 89. News, opinions, passionate baseball talk from former players and GMs, plus interviews with players, managers, and executives, original specials, and much, much, much more. All baseball, every day, on your radio. If you can hear me right now, you've got MLB Network Radio, Sirius XM Channel 89, and on the Sirius XM app. You love listening to baseball. You love talking about baseball. You love yelling at your buddies about baseball because they love baseball, and so do we. That's why Sirius XM has the only channel on the radio dedicated to baseball 24-7. It's MLB Network Radio, Sirius XM Channel 89. News, opinions, passionate baseball talk from former players and GMs, plus interviews with players, managers, and executives, and much, much, much more. If you can hear me right now, you've got MLB Network Radio, Sirius XM Channel 89, and on the Sirius XM app. The most important person in sports is you, the fan. Let me tell you something. I'm a real fan. And your place for sports talk is Mad Dog Sports Radio, where your voice is heard all day long. I couldn't wait to get into the truck, turn on 82. Share the thrill of victory. The joy, the jubilation. I can't stop smiling. And the agony of defeat. When is this franchise going to realize people really care about this? Passionate sports fans call 888-MAD-DOG-6. You gotta love sports. Mad Dog Sports Radio, Channel 82, or anytime on the Sirius XM app. 24. 24- 7365 coverage of all things NASCAR. All things NASCAR happens exclusively on Sirius XM NASCAR Radio Channel 90. Look, 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 what are you Is Toronto Blue Jays baseball? Low rounding and heading for second. The throw. In time. On the Sportsnet Radio Network. The new and improved Rogers Center opened with a bang yesterday. Jose Barrios was as dominant as ever while the bats came up with five runs helped by five doubles. Now Toronto looks for the elusive first series win of the season in its third try at securing a three-gamer in 2024. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Ben Schulman alongside the former Major League reliever Chris LaRue. Show Ali is our host and producer today with Tom Young and Andrew Adams as our technical directors. Toronto Blue Jays baseball is brought to you by the local family-owned Crown Rust Control Centers in Prince George, British Columbia, and Calgary, Alberta. Protect your vehicle from rust today. Find your local family-owned Crown at crown.com, Canada's number one rust protection. 40,000 strong were rocking yesterday, and they'll want an encore today. Veteran Chris Bassett takes them out at Rogers Centre for the first time this year, a place he dominated last season to a 2.86 ERA in 17 starts. On the other side, Mariners phenom George Kirby tries to force a rubber match in the home opening series. First pitch between the Blue Jays and Mariners is minutes away. You're listening to Blue Jays baseball, streaming on the Sportsnet app, sportsnet.ca, and across the Sportsnet. Net Radio Network. Timber Mart is Canada's building center. A solid neighbor to call upon when you've got a job to do. Your dependable home improvement store that offers the added value of Air Miles Reward Miles with every purchase of $15 or more. Visit TimberMart.ca. At Crown Rust Control Center, protection runs deep. Because every Crown Rust Control Center is owned by a local family who cares beyond business. Your Crown Rust Control Center is 100% committed to their product, to you, to their community, which is your community. Community. Protecting you and what matters to you is equally important as protecting your vehicle. Did you know spring's the best time of year to protect your vehicle from rust? For a special spring offer, find your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center at crown.com. We're two men in a truck, the movers who care. You never know when cardiac arrest can happen. That's why each and every one of our trucks carries a life-saving Mikey defibrillator as part of our Mikey On Board program. Whether we're on the highway or in front of your house, we're prepared to help anyone whose heart may skip a beat. The Mikey Network has saved many lives, making Mikeys accessible to the public. And now they're on board our trucks. We're two men in a truck. Two men and a truck. The movers who care. Timber Mart always has plans to help you with your plans. Your home, your cottage, your garage, whatever needs your attention first, check the most visited spot on our website for ready-to-order plans to get the job done with Canada's Building Center. Visit TimberMart.ca. The biggest clubs in world soccer clash at the UEFA Champions League. And it's on Sirius XM FC. Stopped in by Mbappe. 
The French capital is the backdrop for a titanic quarterfinal showdown as PSG play host to Barcelona. Lewandowski puts Barcelona into the quarterfinal of the Champions League. PSG versus Barcelona, Wednesday at 3 Eastern on Sirius XM FC 157 and streaming on the Sirius XM app. Blue Jays fans, after this game, get back to what's really important, your fantasy football team. We're talking about it right now on Fantasy Sports Radio, Channel 87, and the Sirius XM app. At Radio Network. The 2-2. Hope to center field. Charging in Rodriguez. It's down for a base hit. Guerrero in to score. Bichette coming home. The throws to the backstop. He's in, and the runners are at second and third. Two-run single, Davis Schneider. He's standing on second. Turner's on third. Three-nothing Blue Jays. He doesn't change his approach, really. You know, he, his at-bats are really consistent. Um, you know, whether it's early or late, you know, I think that's that's what makes him really good. You know, he's he has a knack for just putting good at-bats together. Um, and they've happened to come with guys on base, whether it's a homer in Houston or tonight. Davis Schneider came up with his first multi-hit game of the season and extended a streak to start the year of four straight hits driving in runs the fifth hit would just be one to put him on base but he still had a very good day as did the blue jays in a 5-2 win for the home opener over the seattle mariners now it's time for game two and a win today means a series win for toronto for the first time this year i'm ben shulman to my left is chris larue and chris blue jays really couldn't have asked for more out of what they got yesterday from pitching defense and offense they kind of had everything clicking Jose Barrios was incredible last night. I think we talked about him a lot last night on the broadcast. He was a guy that that, that led this team from start to finish, and he looked like it was, it was he was in midseason form as he has the first two starts of his season. Everybody had a hit last night outside of George Springer in the starting in the starting lineup, and you heard you heard John Schneider talk about it in some of his scrums he thinks this offense is starting to see the ball better they're starting to go up to the plate with a better approach take better swings don mattingly said this early earlier on in the week you have to go up there and swing at your pitch don't just go up there swinging at everything just because it's in the zone you have to wait for your pitch you can't swing at a fastball down and away if that's not the pitch you want so the, the offense definitely looks like they're, they have a better approach. Let's see if it continues tonight against a, a very good starting pitcher. Chris Bassett taking the mound. Before we get to game action, let's take a look at the Bet365 standings update. At Bet365, you can bet live in-game on game props, totals, and the money line. Download the app and find out why. It's never ordinary at Bet365. 19-plus play responsibly. Ontario only. The Yankees top the division at 9-2 and two right now. Boston, after a loss today to Baltimore, is 7-4. and four. The Orioles, 6-4 and four in third place after that victory. And the Tampa Bay and Toronto tied at 5-6. and six. In the AL East, the Mariners are tied for third right now in the AL West at four and seven. Knotted up with Houston, everyone's chasing Texas and the Los Angeles Angels. Chris Bassett on the mound right now, and Chris, who's going to be in that lineup for Scott Service and the Seattle Mariners facing him today? Thanks, Ben. For the for the Mariners tonight, leading off and playing shortstop is J.P. Crawford. He had that big homer last night off Jimmy Garcia. In center field, batting second is Julio Rodriguez. Playing second base and batting third is Jorge Polanco. Ty France will clean up and play first base. Mitch Hanniger is in right field. He'll bat fifth. DHing and batting sixth is Mitch Garver. Cal Raleigh is behind the plate. He'll bat seventh. Dominic Canzone will bat eighth and play left field. And batting ninth is Josh Rojas. He'll play third base. Pitching for the Mariners tonight is George Kirby. Chris Bassett on the mound for the Blue Jays. Who do they have going tonight? For the Blue Jays tonight, leading off and playing right field is George Springer at first base, and hitting second is Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Playing shortstop and hitting third, Bo Bichette. Justin Turner will clean up in DH. In left field and batting fifth is Davis Schneider. Kevin Biggio will be at second base. He'll bat sixth. Behind the plate and batting seventh is Alejandro Kirk. Isaiah Kainafalefa is at third. He'll bat eighth. And in center field is Dalton Varsho. He'll bat ninth. J.P. Crawford, the lead up. Loft hitter for Houston is in the lefty batter's box. Here's Chris Bassett into the wind. His first pitch is high and outside. Ball one. Underway today at 7.08 Eastern. Indoor at Rogers Center. Next pitch to Crawford. 
Hit in the air to left center field. Schneider, the left fielder, chasing it down. Stomp stutters, makes the catch. One out. We're here in the top of the first inning. This first inning is brought to you by Armstrong Bird Food. Bring nature to your backyard with Armstrong. Feeding Blue Jays since 1986. Visit armstrongbirdfood.com. Bassett getting a new baseball. Blue Jays wearing their home whites today. Julio Rodriguez is in the box, batting from the right side for the Mariners. The pitch. In there, strike one. Tough start to the season for Chris Bassett. 0-2 in two starts. 7-7-1 ERA. Started at the Trop and then in Houston. The 0-1. Fouled off. Nothing in two. And it's been a familiar story so far. Most of the damage being done against Bassett coming from left-handed batters. Rodriguez, the hitter right now, bats from the right side. Twitching his black bat, pointing it up toward the ceiling. The 0-2. Swing and a miss. First strikeout of the day for Chris Bassett, a high fastball, and there are two down. And that's kind of what he's done all season long. Lefties are hitting just 220, or sorry, righties are hitting just 222 against him. And before tonight, lefties were hitting 600. Here's a guy batting left, the switch hitter Jorge Polanco. Two outs, base is empty. IKF, the third baseman, comes in even with the baseline. Everyone shifts over to the pull side against Polanco. Bassett nods his head in agreement with Alejandro Kirk. Here's the pitch. Outside. Alejandro Kirk behind the plate, as you just heard. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. at first. Kevin Biggio plays second with Bo Bichette at short. IKF's the third baseman. Davis Schneider in left. Dalton Varsho in center. George Springer in right. Next pitch is a slow breaking ball for ball two. Pass it behind the rubber for a moment. Now steps on. The 2-0. High ball three. Polanco is going to be one of five Mariners tonight who will bat left against Chris Bassett. Three true lefties in J.P. Crawford, Dominic Canzone, and Josh Rojas. The switch hitters Polanco and Cal Raleigh as well. 3-0 to Polanco. Fastball strike one. In the series opener, Jorge Polanco drew a pair of walks, was 0 for 2 otherwise. The pitch. Called strike two. Fastball on the inside edge. And it's a full count. Polanco steps back into the box. An underhanded golf swing. And now ready to go. Payoff pitch. Smoked foul into the second deck down the right field line. Actually bouncing off the boxes in the 300 level before falling into the seats. Yeah, Jorge Polanco is a guy that has a lot of power. He's, he had 33 home runs at one point in his career. You can't just groove one here. 2021 was the year he hit 33 for Minnesota. After a long career with Minnesota dating back to 2014, he's in his first year with Seattle. Pass it going to the pitch calm on his right hip twice. Nods and winds. The 3-2. Fastball outside, ball four. So he loses Polanco in the first inning. Here comes Ty France, one of the few hot hitters that Seattle has to start the season. Yeah, Chris Bassett has had a lot of success against right-handed hitters. He seems a lot more comfortable throwing inside and outside to, to righties. He just can't seem to, to use the inside part of the plate to lefties. That's something he's going to have to he's going to have to start doing. Gets a righty now, though, the pitch to France. Called strike one. He's just so smooth against righties as he just zips that fastball right by Ty France there. Got to be wary of France, though. His three hits yesterday helped improve his season line to 11 for 29, a 379 average. The 0-1. Fouled off. That breaking ball was sliced into the seats off the handle. Nothing in two.
Second game back for France after missing three days on paternity leave. He steps right into the back edge of the box. Holds his bat in his left hand. Twirls it twice. Three times. Make it four. Now he's ready to go. Pass it from the stretch. The 0-2. Just a little bit high. That was the splitter just above the zone. It's one ball and two strikes. Yeah, that was just a hair above that strike zone. Pretty good pitch. Just want that thing a little bit down. Pass it will give you pretty much every pitch in the book. He turns, throws to first. A dive back from Polanco. Vladdy stares at him but does not tag him. Pass it comes set quickly. Kicks, delivers. Swing and a miss. Beat him with a fastball over the plate. Two strikeouts in the first inning. Chris Bassett blanks the Mariners early on despite the two-out walk. No score headed to the bottom of the first. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Everyone dreams of owning their own personal slice of heaven. Now you can, thanks to Fixed Rate Pizza by Pizza Pizza. Until the end of 2024, lock into an extra-large four-topping pizza at a fixed price of $17.99. No matter how bad food prices get this year, your pizza price stays. So why not say no to surge pricing and yes to Fixed Rate Pizza? Order now from Pizza Pizza. Order pizza pizza. At Crown Rust Control, protection runs deep because every Crown Rust Control Center is owned by a local family who cares beyond business. Your Crown Rust Control is 100% committed to their product, to you, to their community, which is your community. Protecting you and what matters to you is equally important as protecting your vehicle. Did you know spring's the best time of year to protect your vehicle from rust? For a special spring offer, find your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center at crown.com. At Bet365, we don't do ordinary. That's why we introduced in-game betting. Because when the game starts, the action doesn't stop. With in-game betting, you can wager on game props, player props, totals, and the money line. And remember, in-game, you can track your same-day parlay with the option to cash out. Check out in-game betting and find out why. It's never ordinary at Bet365. Must be 19 years or older. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. If you or someone you know has concerns about gambling, visit connexontario.ca. This is Toronto Blue Jays baseball. Fastball hit to center field. Varsho with a dive and he makes the catch. On Sportsnet 590 The Fan and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Welcome to the Timbermark Broadcast booth. I'm Ben Schulman alongside Chris LaRue. Bottom of the first inning, Blue Jays and Mariners at Rogers Center. George Kirby, the right-hander, flicking his glove. Now gets into the wine deals to George Springer. It's a fastball for strike one. Third start of the season for Kirby, who's 1-1 one one with a 5-2-3 ERA. The 0-1. Down and away, one ball, one strike. And Kirby's a, a, a guy that he does the Ryan Dempster shake before with his yes. glove. Just so he's not tipping any of his pitches. He does have a lot of pitches. He has five pitches. The 1-1. One, one. Fastball blown by Springer at 98, 1 and 2. And Kirby's not just a guy that throws 98 miles an hour. He's a guy that has incredible command. He only walked 19 guys last year in almost 191 innings. Led Major League Baseball in walks per nine and strikeout to walk ratio. The 1 2. Springer hits a ball high to center field, not very deep, tailing toward right center. It's raced down by Julio Rodriguez, 1 out. For Kirby, he's got a four-seamer and a sinker. Put together, they'll make up about 60% of the pitches he throws. He's got a slider, a curveball as well. A splitter, and he had a change last year, hasn't really used it this year. One out, base is empty. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is up. Two-hit day yesterday for Vlad. The pitch. Inside, ball one. Yeah, I said he had five pitches. He probably has six. That sixth one is that change that he rarely uses. Just use the split. <laughs> kind of a similar pitch anyway. 
The 1-0. Down low, two balls, no strikes. Kirby was dominant against the Boston Red Sox despite walking an uncharacteristic two batters in that start. 2-0 pitch. Fouled back, 2-1. But his last start against Cleveland was a tough one. Ended up giving up eight runs, six of them earned. The eight runs are the most he's given up in a start in his major league career. The six earned are tied for third most in 58 career starts. This is 59th. The 2-1. Fouled off late swing by Vlad. Pokes away 98 on the outside edge. Well, it's almost unfair for a guy that, that has such great command like Kirby to have a fastball that sits 96 to 98 miles an hour. That just seems unfair to me. Life isn't fair. <laughs> and that's why he's so good. Kirby's standing tall in the middle of the rubber. Steps to his left and delivers. Guerrero hits a sharp ground ball to second. Ranging to his left. Bobbled by Polanco. Picks it up. Throw to first. Not in time. That was a close one. The Mariners likely to take a look. But Guerrero got on his horse out of the box. And Polanco's bobble might have afforded the Blue Jays there a free, ba free base runner. Yeah, you, so often when Vlad hits a ground ball like that to the infield, he kind of just, I don't want to say he strolls to first base, but he doesn't run as hard as he should. Right there, he runs out of the box. And he is safe at first base on the air by Jorge Polanco. So Guerrero on first, Bo Bichette to the plate. Bo had a double and four trips yesterday. Came around to score. Kirby from the stretch. The pitch. Outside, ball one. Kirby has such good command. It's even shocking that he started off Vlad and Bo with first pitch balls. In his career, he's thrown a first pitch strike almost 70% of the time. The 1-0. Fouled back into the screen. And right away, I know why his command is so good. His 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 mechanics are so simple, and they're so repeatable. And when you look when you look at a pitcher, you see his mechanics that look like that. You just assume that he has good command of all his pitches. Guerrero with a huge leap at first. Now goes back. The pitch is cut on and missed. Strike two. Vladdy essentially taking a secondary lead there before the pitch was even thrown, then bounced back toward the back. Not a guy who's stolen many bases in his career. 18 since he came up with the Blue Jays in 2019. 1-2. Inside, Bichette went a quarter of the way around, but held up. Two balls, two strikes. Yeah, that was that good hard sinker from Kirby. 97 miles an hour. Started on the inside part of the plate and ran, almost hit Bo in the hip there. Good sinker, but good take. One out, 2-2 two, two count, no score. Bottom of the first, Vladdy on first. And the pitch to Bichette. Fouled off. Hit that one high in the air down the right field line. It falls into the 200 level. Two balls and two strikes still. Kind of looks like, like Vlad wants to steal a bag over there. I mean, he tried it eight <laughs> times last year, stole five. He will go at some point this season. Four-step lead for Guerrero. The 2-2. Ground ball to second. This could be two. Polanco fields it cleanly. Flips to Crawford for one over to first. And that's an inning ender. 4-6-3. The Mariners turn it, and they erase the Polanco error. No score at the end of one. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Netflix is a joke radio brings you exclusive comedy specials and stand up from Netflix's massive library from the world's biggest comedians. He's Mick Jagger. I pitched him a joke and he went, not funny. We give you unparalleled access to Netflix's top premieres and join Tom Papa and Fortune Finster every day for interviews with the biggest names in comedy. <laughs> Netflix is a joke radio channel 93. Search comedy on the all new SiriusXM app. 
Fantasy Sports Radio is helping you win your fantasy leagues right now on Channel 87. It's a home run for Ronald Acuna. From in-season fantasy baseball management to daily fantasy basketball to getting you ready for the NFL Draft, Fantasy Sports Radio is here to help you dominate. How you manage your team day in and day out will be the difference in where you finish in 2024. Fantasy Sports Radio, your home for fantasy sports. Channel 87 and on the all-new Sirius XM app. The NASCAR Cup Series is on Sirius XM. We're back on the track Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Eastern. It's the Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 400 from Texas Motor Speedway on Sirius XM NASCAR Radio Channel 90 in the car and on the all-new Sirius Sirius XM XM app. Get closer to everything that moves you wherever you are with the Sirius XM app. Let's make some smoke and drink some beer. Yeah! Fantasy Sports Radio is helping you win whichever fantasy sport you play. Right now on Channel 87 and on the all-new Sirius XM app. Top of the second inning in downtown Toronto. Blue Jays and Mariners scoreless so far. Chris Bassett on the rubber for Toronto. I'm Ben Schulman alongside Chris LaRue. Here's the pitch to Mitch Hanniger. High and inside, ball one. Bassett with a walk and two strikeouts in the first inning. The righty looking down at the mound. Nods his head. Now into the wind. The 1-0. Breaking ball lands high. 2-0. Quickly into the next pitch. The offering from Bassett. Called strike one. Home plate umpire tonight is Brock Ballou. Ben May play... uh, Umpires, pardon me, doesn't play. Umpires at first. Adam Beck at second. C.B. Buckner at third. The 2-1. High, ball three. C.B. Buckner looks like he's healthy. Got drilled in the mask last night. He did. Good to see he's okay, though. He stands beyond the third base back. Here's the 3-1 to Hanniger. It's high, ball four. Leadoff walk issued by Bassett. This second inning is presented by Bet365. Download the Bet365 app for today's baseball odds and find out why it's never ordinary at Bet365. 19 plus, play responsibly, Ontario only. Guerrero and Hanniger exchange pleasantries over at first. Runner on first, no outs, no score top of the second, and Mitch Garver is up. He takes a first pitch strike. Chris Bassett is so much more effective when he can throw strike one, just like he did right there. Now he can throw any number of different pitches. The 0-1. Fouled off. Loops over the screen and into the seats behind home plate. Nothing in two. Very good sinker on the inside part of the play. Kind of ties up Garver. And now as a hitter, you're really in a bind. There are seven different ways that Bassett could go after you. He steps onto the rubber, fiddling with that pitch calm on his right hip. Now we set, glove above the belt, the 0-2. Missed just inside. Tried to sneak a fastball by him. Hanniger with a solid lead at first, although not much of a stolen base threat. Guerrero a step and a half off the bag, kind of half holding him on. 1-2. Down and away, two balls, two strikes. That was a really good sequence there. Two good hard sinkers in, and then that super, super slow breaking ball at 71 miles an hour. Garver has no idea what's coming now. Two-two pitch. Bouncing ball up the middle, fielded by Biggio. Steps on the second base back, throws to first. 4-3, double play. Kevin Biggio made a handful of strong defensive plays yesterday. That's his first good one today as he gets two outs for the Blue Jays. Yeah, another good pitch. A good fastball from Bassett. A little bit elevated, but I think that's where they wanted it. Garver just grounds out to to Kevin Biggio at second base. And that clears the bases as a pocket of three guys batting left come up. Cal Raleigh, the switch hitting catcher, is first. The pitch. Down and in, ball one. 
And this is where Bassett has struggled all year. He, he's, he's struggled getting that fastball, that cutter, that slow breaking ball inside to left-handed hitters. Next pitch. Misses outside, 2-0. and Raleigh's off to a slow start this year. Six for his first 29. That's 207 average, although he hit his first homer of the year yesterday in the ninth inning. The 2-0. Hard ground ball to second. Vacuumed up by Biggio. Pumps, throws to first, and retires Raleigh. A pair of ground balls is all Chris Bassett needs to record three outs, a double play, then a ground out to second. We're scoreless, middle of the second. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. He doesn't throw fastballs, he throws Fuego. He has the focus and agility of a Shaolin monk. He's not just a pitcher, he's a machine. He defends the field and our city's honor. He is one of the best defensively out of the mound. Jose Barrios is as good as gold. Celebrate Jose's golden accomplishment with the Jose Barrios Gold Glove Bobblehead. Friday, April 12th. For tickets, visit BlueJays.com. At Crown Rust Control Center, protection runs deep. Because every Crown Rust Control Center is owned by a local family who cares beyond business. Your Crown Rust Control Center is 100% committed to their product, to you, to their community, which is your community. Protecting you and what matters to you is equally important as protecting your vehicle. Did you know spring's the best time of year to protect your vehicle from rust? For a special spring offer, find your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center at crown.com. This is Toronto Blue Jays baseball. Bichette powers the ball to left field. Going back, Peralta. It's out of here. On Sportsnet 590 The Fan and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Now's your chance to win life-changing money while supporting kids in Jays care programs like Challenger Baseball. Buy now for your chance to win the amazing April 50-50 jackpot, already over $800,000. Get your tickets now at bluejays.com slash 50-50 from anywhere in Ontario or Nova Scotia. No score, bottom of the second inning. Justin Turner, Davis Schneider, Kevin Biggio to bat for the Blue Jays against the Mariners. George Kirby, Seattle starter, pitches to Turner, and it's low ball one. Just another strong night in the young season and young Blue Jay career of Justin Turner. A double and a walk yesterday and four trips to the plate. Came around to score in the second. 1-0. Called strike. That double helped Turner to an American League leading five doubles already this season. The 1-1. Called strike again. Nice breaking ball on the outside edge. And you can see the respect that George Kirby has for Justin Turner. Three straight breaking balls to start this at-bat. The one-two. Hit hard but foul down the right field line. Caught on a ricochet by the (laughs) ball boy down there. Nice catch. He'll flip it into the seat. Still one ball, two strikes. Justin Turner, again, so good at just fighting off tough pitches. That was a good fastball down and away. Justin Turner kind of just flicks his bat and fouls it back. What does Kirby have for him now? Next pitch. Called strike three. Sinker broke back over the outside part of the plate. First strikeout of the day for George Kirby. And that is such a tough pitch. Even if Justin Turner looks like that, you know that that is a tough pitch. A 97-mile-an-hour sinker down and away. Almost impossible to hit. That's Chris LaRue. I'm Ben Shulman. Show Ali, our host and producer today. Andrew Adams and Tom Young, our technical directors. One out, base is empty. Bottom of the second, Davis Schneider sees the first pitch and takes it for strike one. Schneider getting the start in left field today. 
And this is a start that maybe even a week ago he might not have had a high-velocity fastball thrower in Kirby. The 0-1. Called strike at the top of the zone with a fastball, nothing in two. Schneider points his bat out towards center field. Now ready to go. Rests it on his right shoulder. And the 0-2 pitch. Called strike three. Three straight fastballs. Set down Schneider. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for George Kirby. Two outs. Well, clearly George Kirby and Cal Raleigh were attacking his weak spot there. Even that last pitch, which was kind of, well, it was on the outside part of the play. Cal Raleigh was set up at the top of the zone, even outside of the zone with his glove. George Kirby just missed his spot, but still a really good pitch. Here's Kevin Biggio, first left-handed hitter for the Blue Jays today. The pitch. Called strike one. Kirby has been dealing so far. He's faced the minimum through five batters. Guerrero reached on an error, but was quickly erased in a double play. Two outs and the base is empty. No score, bottom two. The 0-1. Down and in. I tell you what, this guy is fun to watch. Electric stuff, always in the zone. His 1-1. One, one. High and outside. And just like that, arm side high, nowhere near the zone. <laughs> <laughs> Kirby shakes his shoulders, loosens up his jersey just a little bit. The 2-1. Called strike. Breaking ball down and in. Or I guess not down and in. Right on the bottom and inside part of the zone. Two and two. That is a good, hard, sharp breaking ball from George Kirby. His 2-2 two -two offering. Outside. Full count. You can see he kind of pulled off on that pitch. Tried to overthrow it. And it was arm side high. Took Chris Bassett 29 pitches to go through the first two innings. Here is George Kirby's 29th pitch of the day. Sharply hit up the middle, threw into right center field. Kevin Biggio around first. He'll backpedal back to the base and high five Mark Budzinski. It's a two out single, first Blue Jays base hit of the day. Here comes Alejandro Kirk. Kevin Biggio is so good at using the big part of the field, just staying through that baseball. That was a tough pitch. Good sinker from George Kirby. And Kevin Biggio just stays right through it, hits it right back up the middle. That sets up Kirk, who's got tons of space on the right side. Biggio being held on right now, and the second baseman, Polanco, playing up the middle. The pitch. High ball one. Blue Jays attempted and successfully stole two bases yesterday. Wonder if a guy like Biggio, who has speed but hasn't stolen a ton in his career, thinks about moving here. The 1 0. Ground ball to second, picked up by Polanco. He'll go over to first, and that will end the second inning. One hit for the Blue Jays, but it's stranded. No runs in this game so far through two innings. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. At Crown Rust Control, protection runs deep because every Crown Rust Control Center is owned by a local family who cares beyond business. Your Crown Rust Control is 100% committed to their product, to you, to their community, which is your community. Protecting you and what matters to you is equally important as protecting your vehicle. Did you know spring's the best time of year to protect your vehicle from rust? For a special spring offer, find your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center at crown.com. Everyone dreams of owning their own personal slice of heaven. Now you can, thanks to Fixed Rate Pizza by Pizza Pizza. Until the end of 2024, lock into an extra-large four-topping pizza at a fixed price of $17.99. No matter how bad food prices get this year, your pizza price stays. So why not say no to surge pricing and yes to fixed rate pizza? Order now from Pizza Pizza. Go to pizza pizza .ca. At Bet365, we don't do ordinary. 
That's why we introduced in-game betting. Because when the game starts, the action doesn't stop. With in-game betting, you can wager on game props, player props, totals, and the money line. And remember, in-game, you can track your same-day parlay with the option to cash out. Check out in-game betting and find out why. It's never ordinary at Bet365. Must be 19 years or older. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. If you or someone you know has concerns about gambling, visit connexontario.ca. This is Toronto Blue Jays baseball. Double's gone. Two-run shot, Kevin Kiermaier. On Sportsnet 590, The Fan, and the Sportsnet Radio Network. The third inning is brought to you by the local family-owned Crown Rust Control Centers in Prince George, British Columbia, and Calgary, Alberta. Protect your vehicle from rust today. Find your local family-owned Crown at crown.com, Canada's number one rust protection. Dominic Canzone leads off for the Mariners. 0-0, Toronto and Seattle, game two of this series. I'm Ben Schulman. To my left, Chris LaRue. Left-handed hitting Canzone, ready to go. Here's Bassett into the wind. His pitch. Slow breaking ball for strike one. 69 miles an hour on the curve that, from the right-hander. That's such an important pitch for Chris Bassett. Not only throwing strike one, but throwing strike one with that big slow curveball. Slow curve again and a huge miss. On the swing there by Canzone. That was actually the sweeper, but just a little bit harder at 72. (laughs) You get a kick out of that pitch. I love it. (laughs) 0-2. Fouled off. Off the netting and into the Blue Jays' dugout down the third baseline. And Canzone was way behind that fastball. It was only 91 miles an hour, but because he saw those two slow breaking balls, almost swinging through that fastball. Pass it with two strikeouts so far today. Unleashes a two-strike pitch. Ground ball hits softly to second. Biggio will pick it up. Sidearm to first. One out. Busy day for Kevin Biggio. He's had the last three balls in play by the Mariners. Well, that was actually a good sign because Chris Bassett came in on the hands there of Canzone with that cutter. Very, very good pitch, and he needs to keep doing that tonight if he's going to be staying in this game for a while. The cutter has been a big part of his arsenal against lefties. Here's the pitch to Josh Rojas. It's low ball one. It's a pitch he was working on in spring along with Jose Barrios. Rojas is the nine hitter. One out and the base is empty. Kiner Falefa coming in in case he bunts. 1-0. Just a little bit low. Two balls and no strikes. The batter Rojas acquired at the deadline last year from Arizona, along with Dominic Canzone. 2-0. Popped up, left side, foul territory out of play. That was when Seattle traded their closer to Arizona. Paul Seawald went, and four players came in, including Canzone and Rojas. That ended up being a little bit awkward because Seattle missed the playoffs by a single game. The 2-1. Swing and a miss. Two and two. 88 wins for the Mariners last year. 89 for the Blue Jays, who took the final wild card spot. Mariners only missed their division by two games as well. Houston won on a tiebreaker over Texas. Both were 90 and 72. 2-2. Two, two. Breaking ball fouled off. That was a wild last three or four days last year. Yeah, there were so many combinations. I mean, I think three days out any of the four teams still were really in the mix you didn't know who was going to win the division in the al west you didn't know which teams were going to be going to face tampa bay or minnesota 2-2 pitch hit down the left field line rolling into left field a base hit rojas around first he'll stop there it's a one-out single to flip the lineup over alejandro kirk's target was up and in almost at rojas's hands And Chris Bassett threw a fastball that ran right back over the middle of the plate. That's something that he's been doing a lot this season. And Rojas kind of just sticks the bat out and drives it down the line there. If he hit his target, he swings right through that or he pops it up. That's kind of been the season for Chris Bassett. Another left-handed hitter, J.P. Crawford up, takes outside, ball one. Crawford flew out to left in the first. No score, top of the third inning. Rojas leads off first, one out. 
The 1-0 to Crawford. Called strike. J.P. Crawford's been with Seattle since 2019. Not many Mariners have been around that long. Mitch Hanniger kind of, but he spent last year with San Francisco. The 1-1. Inside. It wasn't that long ago that Crawford, a highly touted prospect in the Philly system, had to bear the burden of trying to be the next Jimmy Rollins. That's how they were talking about him. 2-1. Outside, 3-1. Well, he was a first-round pick, 16th overall. So there has to be some pressure. For sure. Don't get me (laughs) wrong. But Jimmy Rollins isn't just any other guy to try and follow up. And they called him up at 22 years old in 2017. Only played 23 games that year. Bassett steps off. Shuffling back to the bag is the runner, Rojas. Played about 50 games in 2018 for the Phillies. And then was dealt in a big trade in 2018. 3-1 pitch delivered outside. Ball four. Rojas was taken off on it, but it doesn't matter. The walk will put runners on first and second for the dangerous Julio Rodriguez. Are you surprised that Julio Rodriguez has zero home runs this year? I mean, overall, he's he's off to a really, really tough start. Eight for his first 44. Batting well under 200. The first pitch to the right-handed hitter is called strike one. Just has one double, three RBIs, and two stolen bases so far this year. Last year, he hit 32 homers and drove in 103. First and second, one out. Blue Jays at double play depth in the infield. And the 0-1. Fouled back over the netting to the right side. Nothing in two. Although, while it wasn't this bad, he had an odd start last year. Really was slow in the first half overall. Hit below 250. Only 13 homers in the first 87 games. And then he exploded in the second half. The 0-2. Breaking ball misses low. In August alone, he had 30 RBIs in 23 games, and he set a modern record from August 16th to 19th with 17 hits in four games. Bassett's 1-2. Outside with a fastball, 95 from Chris Bassett. Don't see that all that often, but yanked that one to make it 2-2. Yeah, that was at 95, but it was nowhere near the zone. Nobody's swinging at that pitch. Alejandro Kirk asks for time, steps out in front of the plate. He's going to deliver some signs to the infield just in case Rojas and Crawford think about a double steal. Rodriguez stares at his barrel, now gets back into the box. 2-2 count, one out, two on. Bassett's offering. Ground ball up the middle. Biggio has it. Flips to Bichette for one. Throw over to first. In time. A twin killer. Julio Rodriguez grounds into a double play. The teams are waiting a little bit, though, because that was a close one, and Seattle might want to take a look at it. Bichette had to throw across his body, running across the bag. And they won't look. It is a 4-6-3 inning-ending double play. Bassett pitches out of some trouble in the third and will go to the bottom half in a scoreless ball game. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. The NASCAR Cup Series is on Sirius XM. We're back on the track Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Eastern. It's the Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 400 from Texas Motor Speedway on Sirius XM NASCAR Radio Channel 90. In the car and on the all-new Sirius Sirius XM XM app. Get closer to everything that moves you wherever you are with the Sirius XM app. Let's make some smoke and drink some beer. Yes! Are you regretting eating that gas station hot dog? Yeah, we know. We've been there, too. 
This is a message for baseball fans like you. Did you know that you get a channel that's talking baseball 24-7 as part of your Sirius XM subscription? What? Our lineup includes shows hosted by former big leaguers and executives. Plus, you'll hear from 17 managers each week. MLB Network Radio is on Sirius XM Channel 89. Or just search MLB Network Radio on the SXM app. Sirius XM Sports. We're more than just a game. There is no competition in soccer quite like the UEFA Champions League. And it's on Sirius XM FC. Kylian Mbappe delivering when it matters most. The stakes are higher now in the knockout stage where one goal can transform a club's trajectory. Jim Bellingham's driving, driving scores! And one performance can turn a star into an immortal. Erling Haaland has five! It's the Champions League knockout stage and all the top matches are on Sirius XM FC 157 and the all-new Sirius XM app. The UFC is on Sirius XM. Hear all the action live from the Octagon every weekend on Sirius XM Fight Nation Channel 156. And the Sportsnet Radio Network. Still looking for our first run of the game. It's the bottom of the third inning at Rogers Center. Blue Jays and Mariners in game two of the series. I'm Ben Schulman alongside Chris LaRue. George Kirby pitches to Isaiah Kiner Falefa. And the Blue Jays third baseman goes around on a breaking ball down and away for strike one. IKF had quite the introduction to the Blue Jays fans yesterday. Two for four, a double, a single, and a, sco- and a stolen base. Knocked in a run as well. The 0-1 down and away. One ball, one strike. Third baseman bats right. Leaning back slightly in an open stance. The 1-1. Line foul over the netting to the right, one and two. IKF with a half swing as he gets back into the box, awaiting a one-two from George Kirby. Right-hander winds and delivers. Swing and a miss, strike three, 96 at the top of the zone. Third strikeout of the day for Kirby, one down. And that's the second time George Kirby has done that to a Blue Jays batter today, lulling them to sleep with that off-speed pitch, those three early off-speed pitches, and then blowing a fastball right by them. Did it to Justin Turner as well back in the second. One out, here's Dalton Varsho, the nine-hitter and center fielder. The pitch. Pop up, behind the plate, out of play, left side, 0-1. Blue Jays have one hit today. It's Kevin Biggio back in the second. The left-right splits kind of like for Chris Bassett. Not as much, but are still a deal for George Kirby. 0-1 is lined to right center field. That's down for a base hit. Chasing it down in the gap is Hanniger. Big turn from Varsho, who will race back to first base. He has a single, and both left-handed hitters have base hits today for the Blue Jays. I think George Kirby did Dalton Varsho a favor there, throwing that split finger down in the zone right where Dalton Varsho likes it, down in the strike zone, and Dalton just drops the head and drives it into the gap in right field. That was a really good piece of hitting, but I think George sort of probably stuck with the fastball. Here's George Springer, runner on first, one out, the pitch. Outside ball one. Well, Kirby coming into this game, so only two starts, I will preface it with, has allowed nine of his 11 hits this season to lefties. Lefties hitting 310, righties 154. Springer bats right. Throw over to first, Varsho dives back. So similar to Chris Bassett, obviously Chris Bassett, a little bit elevated with the numbers, but similar at lefties are, are hitting a lot better than righties. Blue Jays starting Biggio and Varsho, the only left-handed hitters for them today. The 1-0. Lofted foul to the right side. One ball, one strike. They do have Daniel Vogel back on the bench and Kevin Kiermeyer, who both hit left. Brian Servan and Ernie Clement are right-handed hitters on the bench today for Toronto. Springer looking to break the deadlock here. Scoreless game, bottom of three. The pitch. Hit off the end of the bat, foul into the netting. 
One and two. A massive hole on the right side of the infield. Ty France is holding on Dalton Varsho at first base, and Jorge Polanco is pretty close to second base up the middle there. Blue Jays did a good job yesterday of going the other way. 40% of the balls they put in play went the opposite direction. Runner takes off, now goes back. Kirby's going to step off. He hadn't made a move yet. Dalton Varsho got a little bit jumpy there as he was looking to steal second base. Yeah, you could hear the, the Seattle Mariners infielders yelling, step off, step off. George Kirby just steps off and looks at second, but nobody was there. The one-two, Varsho stays put. Springer fouls it off. I mean, not a terrible sign, though, that Kirby was paying so little attention that Varsho was four or five steps <laughs> into his steal attempt and could get back without a throw. I would love to see him take off, steal a bag, especially with one out. Stole several of them in spring training. The one-two. Springer fights it off, foul to the right side. Varsho, Varsho taking a couple steps there, a couple hard steps towards second base and stopping. I don't know if that's just a fake or he actually attempted to go but kind of didn't get a good jump. I'd still like to see him go here. He's inching out his lead a little bit. 1-2, he takes off. Pitch is fouled off the foot of Cal Raleigh, who's hopping around behind home plate. That one struck him in the right foot. Welcome to the Timbermart broadcast booth. When home improvement projects are throwing you a curveball, talk to the folks at Timbermart before you begin your next job. They've got the material and know-how to make sure you have all your bases covered. Timbermart, Canada's building center. I'm Ben Schulman alongside Chris LaRue. One, two count, one out. Varsho on first. Springer at the plate. Varsho has at least attempted in some form to steal twice so far. The one-two, he takes off again. Pitch fouled off again, and he's just getting in his sprints right now. Blue Jays were practicing some home to first, scoring from second today, warming up, and Varsho's just getting a little bit of extra work. He keeps running <laughs> second and back to first, and the second and back to first again. I would imagine he's a little bit gassed right now and probably won't take off this time, but I could be wrong. Springer's battle has kept him at first base. He does take off again on the one-two, and it's foul tipped <laughs> again. Should I say that again? He's a little bit gassed and probably won't take off this time. It's like Groundhog Day right now <laughs> for Dalton Varsho. I must say, though, his times coming back to first base are getting slower and slower. <laughs> As they should. Don't waste your energy. Springer has fouled off. Seven pitches in this at-bat. Throw over to first. I mean, it was due. And that was the third disengagement. That'll be a balk. Snuck up on Kirby, and I'll admit me too, because he had to step <laughs> off when Varsho jumped that one time, plus a previous pickoff. Dalton Varsho earns 90 feet there. He did earn it. Yeah, he worked plenty hard. <laughs> so Springer with a runner in scoring position. One out. A peek back at second in the one-two fouled off again. That's eight foul balls in a row for George Springer doing his best Justin Turner impression. And now Ty France is almost halfway between first and second. And Jorge Polanco is almost directly behind second base up the middle. I wouldn't... I'd probably throw an off-speed pitcher. He's thrown a lot of fastballs in a row. The tenth pitch of the plate appearance. Line drive, down in left center field, a base hit. Varsho had to wait for it, but he's still getting the wave around third. The throw goes back in a second. RBI single, George Springer, 1-0 Blue Jays. And George Kirby did throw an off-speed pitch there. It was an 86-mile-an-hour spinner right down the middle, and George Springer stays on it and drives that ball right back up the middle past J.P. Crawford in, at short. Third RBI of the season for George Springer, and now Cal Raleigh's going to talk to George Kirby, who was cruising along until Dalton Varsho single. Varsho messed with him a bit on the bases, and Springer spoiled countless pitches to make this a Blue Jays 1-0 lead. What a good job from Dalton Varsho. Actually, that was a great piece of base running. He took two hard steps back to the bag because he was unsure if J.P. Crawford would actually catch that ball. And then he scooted all the way home. He, he was on his horse. 
You had to be careful there. If Crawford made a spectacular catch, he could have been doubled off. Instead, it's one nothing Toronto. Springer on first and Guerrero at the plate. Kirby from the stretch. Fouled back into the screen. Flatty just missed it 0-1. Guerrero 0 for 1 today, reached on an error by second baseman Jorge Polanco in the first. Once again, the right side of the infield is wide open. 0 1. Fouled off, nothing in two. Yeah, there's that huge hole on the right side. Ty France holding on George Springer. I would love to see Vlad go the other way here. We've seen him do it a couple times this season to, for, for base hits on the right side there, but especially with two strikes here, I would love to see him go the other way. Wonder, too, George was stretching his lead out a little bit. He stole 20 bases kind of quietly last year. He doesn't take off on the 0-2, though. It's a broken bat roller to third. Charging in Rojas, throws to second for one. Springer going head first into the bag, topples over the shortstop Crawford. And that will be all they get. It's actually Jorge Polanco he knocked over, but not an illegal slide from Springer as he went right into the bag. His momentum kind of carried him into Polanco, whose knee buckled for a moment, but he's standing up okay after that fielder's choice by Guerrero. Two outs runner on first. Yeah, it actually looked pretty scary for a second there. George not doing anything illegal. Like you said, he, he went in head first. But Jorge Polanco's knee kind of It almost went back awkward. the wrong way, but it, it stopped, thankfully, just before it did. Two outs of the pitch to Bo Bichette. Hot shot foul to the right side, 0-1. one, one. one nothing Blue Jays, thanks to Springer's RBI single. He knocked in Varsho, was just retired on Guerrero's fielder's choice. So it's Vladdy leading off first. Bo at the plate, 0 for 1, grounded into a double play to end the bottom of the first inning. The pitch. Fouled off the glove of Raleigh, rolling toward the on-deck circle, picked up by Turner. It's 0-2 against Bichette. Bo standing close to the plate. Receives the 0-2 and fouls it off to the right side. Infield plays about as straight up as they can against Bichette. Outfield is just slightly shifting to the opposite field. Right on right 0-2. Outside, one ball and two strikes. Cal Raleigh there. Like, if you're watching the Little League World Series where the catcher's set up <laughs> really far outside because you seem to be able to fool the umps there pretty easily with those setups, Raleigh was way off the plate with that setup. You rarely see catchers do that, especially in the big leagues. I mean, you'd almost think that Bo maybe could have seen it. The one-two. High drive. Left field. Way back. Out of here. Second deck blast. Bo Bichette. 3 nothing Blue Jays. First home run of the season for Bichette, who reached down for a two-strike slider and smoked that ball out of the park 431 feet yeah cal raleigh was set up again way outside and george kirby throws a spinning slider on the inside part of the plate and bo bichette just crushed that pitch here's justin turner with two outs first pitch strike three nothing toronto three runs in the bottom of the third First home run at Rogers Center in 2024 belongs to Bo Bichette. First Blue Jays home run. The 0-1. Fouled off. Nothing in two. That was one of those spinning sliders, the backup ones that are they're sometimes often actually hard to hit. But Bo stayed right on that pitch. For Bichette, his fourth and fifth RBIs of the season over the last 
three, four games, he has really been heating up. Ochu. Turner spoils another one over the screen. Well, you heard it from John Schneider. He he said today in the scrum that guys are having better approaches and they're seeing the ball better, and that's clearly evident right there. Turner leaning way back, bobbing back and forth in the box. The 0-2 again is grounded foul. Hits off the front fence of the Blue Jays' dugout. Again, another backup slider. Cal, Cal Raleigh was set up way outside, and George Kirby just throws that little spinner cement mixer up there. Justin Turner, he's actually lucky that Justin Turner didn't hit that ball. 60th pitch of the day for Kirby. And Turner will send another one into the seats. Between George Springer, Justin Turner, Bo Bichette, Kirby has had a tough time finishing guys this inning. He did strike out Isaiah Kiner-Falefa to start the third. But two strike hits galore for the Blue Jays. 0-2 again. Line drive to right. Slicing toward the line. That's down in fair territory. Turner around first. Hanniger scooping it up out of the corner. Throws to second. Not in time. The slide of Turner beats him there. And that's a two-out double. The sixth double of the season for Justin Turner. And again, Justin Turner so good going the other way. Staying on that good hard sinker from George Kirby. George Kirby kind of Let's that ball come back over the middle, and Justin Turner drills it in the corner in right field. Almost gets thrown out at second base, though. <laughs> Got there just in time, though, and Pete Woodworth is going to come out to the mound now and talk to George Kirby, who's given up three runs so far this inning on four hits. Davis Schneider about to come up, and I can't help but think back to George Springer not only winning that battle with all those foul balls and knocking in a run, but the slide he had in second base that potentially prevented a double play. Who knows if they turn it, but he made sure they didn't. And the Blue Jays have homered and doubled since. Runner on second, two down. 3 nothing Toronto. The pitch to Davis Schneider. Outside, ball one. And I'm glad you brought that up because I'm pretty sure nobody will talk about that. The battle from George Springer and then the slide at second base that broke up that double play. Nobody will talk about that, but it was a very important play. You can still break up double plays legally. It's a bit of a lost art. The 1-0. Outside, 2-0. No, you can't quite slide six feet wide of the bag like guys used to do. You can't stick your leg way up in the air. But Springer, on his stomach, slid through the bag and prevented Polanco from ever having a chance to double up Guerrero. 2-0. Fouled off over the screen, 2-1. The thing that I've noticed about George Kirby the last inning and a half or so, he's not coming inside at all. Everything is away. Everything is away. So Blue Jays hitters now can kind of start leaning out, and this is what happens when you can kind of cut off the inside of the plate. His pitch to Schneider called strike. Fastball that looked a little bit high, but maybe just by a sliver. Two balls and two strikes. George Kirby against Davis Schneider. Let's see if he goes with an elevated fastball here. I would, I'd be surprised if he threw anything else. The 2-2. Fastball outside. Full count. Everything is away right now. Everything. Every single pitch on the outside part of the plate. Kirby is great, and sometimes it makes you forget he's 26. He's just in his third season. He was an all-star last year. 3-2 with two outs. Schneider with a fly ball to left. Going backhand zone. Just in front of the track, he'll make the catch to end the inning. The Blue Jays, though, score three runs on four hits. Bo Bichette hits his first home run of the season. It's 3-0 Toronto going to the fourth. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. The 2024 NBA postseason starts next week. And Sirius XM NBA Radio brings you all the action. Slam dunk! Our experts break down every game. This is what playoff basketball is all about. Cover every storyline. Prove me wrong. Prove the people wrong. And bring you every can't-miss moment on the court every single night. He's going to fire up a three for the win! 
Your 24-7 home for hoops throughout the playoffs is Sirius XM NBA Radio Channel 86 in the car. And on the all-new Sirius XM app. This is CJ Nikowski. Join me, Ryan Spielborgs, and Brad Lidge every weekday at 2 p.m. Eastern as we give you the player's perspective of what's happening in baseball. He is possessed every time he goes out there right now. This is crazy. There's this energy that certain players bring. It's Loud Outs every weekday at 2 p.m. Eastern on MLB Network Radio, Sirius XM, Channel 89, and the all-new Sirius XM app. The Women's NCAA Tournament is on Sirius XM. It is going to be fun. It is going to be interesting. For the best guests. Don Staley. I just want us to be who we've been. And coverage of March Madness. Tune in to Sirius XM SEC Radio. From the biggest stars. Reese put back is good. Nobody wants any part. No part of it. Of Angel Reese right now. To the top teams. We've got you covered through the National Championship in Cleveland. It's all on Sirius XM SEC Radio. Channel 374. And the all-new Sirius XM app. Fantasy Sports Radio is helping you win whichever fantasy sport you play. Right now on Channel 87 and on the all-new Sirius XM app. Network. The fourth inning is presented by Bet365. At Bet365, you can watch thousands of live games. Build your own bet, and you can even make a bet while the game's still being played. 19-plus, play responsibly, Ontario only. 3 nothing for the Blue Jays. Bo had a big part of it. A two-run home run in the back half of the third. And now Chris Bassett has a little bit of room to work with. His pitch to Jorge Polanco shows bunt, pulls back, called strike at the top of the zone. I'm Ben Schulman. To my left is Chris LaRue. Show Ali's our host and producer, Andrew Adams and Tom Young, our technical directors. We'll take a look around baseball at the St. Louis Bar and Grill out of town scoreboard this inning. The 0-1. High and outside, one and one. Polanco walked back in the first inning. Three walks this series, but still searching for his first hit. The next pitch called strike 69 mile per hour curveball on the outside edge, one and two. Bassett tucks the ball in his glove, kicks up his knee, fires home, swing and a miss, strike three. Got him on the splitter high and away, one down. When you throw a good sinker for a strike to lead off in that bat, and then you throw that 69-mile-an-hour curveball, batters have no clue what's coming next. It could be an elevated fastball, it could be a changeup like he threw, split finger, anything. That's the third strikeout so far for Chris Bassett. First pitch to Ty France, hit foul, 0-1. The out-of-town scoreboard is brought to you by St. Louis Bar and Grill. Devilishly good since Toronto first raised the trophy in 92. Join them for wings, ribs, beer, cocktails, and catch every play at your local St. Louis Bar and Grill. Download the app or visit stlouiswings.com for more details. Always devilishly good. That one broke the bat of France, so he's getting a new piece of lumber. We can check on the one AL East final already today. Baltimore Orioles starting a three-game series with the Boston Red Sox, and the Orioles dominated the Sox. 7-1 to one was the final score at Fenway Park. The 0-1 fouled off. Nothing in two. Colton Kowser was the big driver of the offense today for Baltimore. Two hits, both doubles. He drove in four runs for Baltimore in that 7-1 win. 3-0 Toronto, one out, base is empty, top of the fourth. Bassett looking down, now directs his attention home. The 0-2, missed high. Big game in the Bronx. My Marlins against my Yankees. Fair. <laughs> One in ten Marlins visiting the nine and two <laughs> Yankees after a dominating performance by New York yesterday. I've been waiting all season to say that. Oh yeah. <laughs> the one two. Hit foul down the right field line. Bassett a little frustrated with the location of that pitch. Yelling as he left the dugout. He has a new baseball, and it's still one ball, two strikes. That game just in the top of the fourth inning, Miami and New York. It's at Yankee Stadium. One nothing right now for the Bronx Bombers. Alex Verdugo hit his second homer of the season. 1-2 pitch. Off the end of the bat foul once again. And you can see why Chris Bassett is upset. 
back-to-back pitches, Alejandro Kirk was set up on on the inside part of the plate, even off the plate inside, and Chris Bassett miss, misses glove side. Looking for back-to-back strikeouts. He struck out France in the first. The one-two. Check swing on a pitch in the dirt. Appeal to first. He got him. Ben May rings up Ty France from beyond the first base bag. There are two down. The final AL East game today on the St. Louis Bar and Grill out of town scoreboard has yet to start. The Rays visiting the Angels for the second game of that series. Aaron Savali against Patrick Sandoval. Yesterday, the Angels dominated the Rays 7-1. to one. Decent start for Los Angeles. First pitch to Mitch Haniger, called strike one. Angels are out to a 6-4 and four start. Not a ton of expectations around them after losing Shohei Otani this offseason, but they do have one of the best in baseball now managing in Ron Washington. The 0-1. Haniger takes high. Two strikeouts this inning for Bassett on two splitters. Base is empty. Top of the fourth. Three-nothing Blue Jays. 1-1. Off the handle. It's looped into the seats. Foul off to the right side. One and two. And that's where Chris Bassett wanted those two previous pitches. He wanted that in on the hands. Really good pitch right there to Hanniger. Bassett in a crouch on the back of the mound. Steps onto the rubber. Five on the pitch clock. His 1-2. Breaking ball. Off the end of the bat. Loop to left field. Schneider puts both hands in the air to call it and makes the catch to end the inning. One, two, three for Chris Bassett. Middle of the fourth inning. Three, nothing Toronto. You're listening to Blue Jays baseball brought to you by your local family owned Crown Rust Control Center streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Everyone dreams of owning their own personal slice of heaven. Now you can, thanks to Fixed Rate Pizza by Pizza Pizza. Until the end of 2024, lock into an extra-large four-topping pizza at a fixed price of $17.99. No matter how bad food prices get this year, your pizza price stays. So why not say no to surge pricing and yes to fixed-rate pizza? Order now from Pizza Pizza. Order pizza pizza that's CA. So that's our company name. Two men in a truck. Ca. We're lots of men with lots of trucks. So give us a call today. At Bet365, we don't do ordinary. That's why we introduced in-game betting. Because when the game starts, the action doesn't stop. With in-game betting, you can wager on game props, player props, totals, and the money line. And remember, in-game, you can track your same-day parlay with the option to cash out. Check out in-game betting and find out why. It's never ordinary at Bet365. Must be 19 years or older. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. If you or someone you know has concerns about gambling, visit connexontario.ca. I give you the world, but there's other planets too. Hola, soy Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Está escuchando a Toronto Blue Jays Baseball en la radio de Sportsnet. Welcome to the Timber Bar Broadcast booth. I'm Ben Schulman. To my left, Chris LaRue. Bottom of the fourth inning, Kevin Biggio leads off for the Blue Jays with Alejandro Kirk and Isaiah kiner falefa behind him. 3-0 Toronto. Biggio one for one. The pitch from George Kirby is hit foul just off to our left off the front facing of the third deck and down into the 100 level 0-1 Biggio took a high fastball into right field last time he was up the 0-1 line drive to left field a bit of a looper but it's down that'll be a second hit of the day for Kevin Biggio he's two for two and again, a really, really good piece of hitting. A good slider on the on the hands of Kevin Biggio. But he, he does such a good job of just muscling that ball over the shortstop into left field. Another pitch up in the zone, which a couple of years ago would have been a spot that pitchers targeted Kevin Biggio a lot because he didn't have a ton of success there. But John Schneider mentioned today that he made some small swing changes last year that have really helped him out on those pitches. 
Leadoff single. Now the pitch to Alejandro Kirk. Outside 1-0. and Big hole on the right side of the infield. Alejandro Kirk is actually very good at going the other way. Yeah, the Mariners have seemed, from our view at least, fairly cookie cutter in their shifts against right-handed hitting. Biggio takes off on the next pitch. It's a called strike. Throw down a second on a hop. Dropped by Polanco. They probably would have had him. But Polanco can't make the pick. And Biggio is at second with a stolen base. Yeah, if that was an average throw, they would have had Kevin Biggio but probably by two steps. But it one hops Jorge Polanco, and he can't come up with it. He's actually pretty disappointed that he didn't catch that ball. But Kevin Biggio swipes second base. Fourth stolen base of the year for the Blue Jays. The 1-1. Called strike. Toronto only stole one base in their first 10 games of the season on the road. They've stolen three in the first game and change against the Seattle Mariners. And Cal Raleigh's a pretty good thrower from behind the plate. The 1-2. Ground ball left side. Picked up at third by Rojas. He'll look back the runner throw over to first. One out. So the runner doesn't advance there. And there's one down, setting up Isaiah Kiner Falefa, who's knocked in one run this year. It came yesterday on a single late in the game. The Hawaiian IKF in the righty batter's box. Biggio with a solid leadoff second, four or five steps. The pitch. Breaking ball, misses outside. IKF wearing a blue sleeve on his lead left arm. Nothing on the back right arm. 1-0. Called strike. Just grabbed the outside edge with a fastball to make it 1-1. One and, one. and we saw last inning George Kirby having a tough time throwing on the inside part of the plate. Actually didn't even really try to throw inside. He tried to throw inside there. And it was almost on the outside part of the plate, glove side. Biggio bouncing around at second. Kirby deals home, and Kiner Falefa charges the ball to right center, splits the gap, and rolls all the way to the track. Biggio around third. He'll score. Kiner Falefa into second with an RBI double. Another pitch from George Kirby that kind of just spins on the in the middle of the plate. That was supposed to be a slider down. And IKF is so good at going the other way, stays through that baseball and splits the right fielder and the center field all the way to the wall. Second double and second RBI of the season for IKF. Early returns say he likes hitting at Rogers Center. <laughs> 4 nothing Blue Jays. Seven hits already for Toronto. We're in the bottom of the fourth. Here's Dalton Varsho, who had one last inning and came around to score. The pitch. Inside, ball one. Third baseman Josh Rojas starting his positioning even with the baseline and actually maybe even stepping inside the line, wary of a potential bunt for a base hit by Varsha, who led the American League in bunts for hits last year. The 1-0 called strike. Well, we also know he loves to drag bunt. Ty France and Jorge Polanco are almost at the outfield grass. Yeah, if, I'd argue he likes to drag bunt <laughs> even more than he likes to go the other way. If he was ever going to drag bunt, now's the time. 1-1 one, one count, one out, IKF on second. Kirby's pitch. Varsho taken high. Mariners starting to get the bullpen up. Former Blue Jay Trent Thornton is taking some crow hops and tosses right now in right field. Next pitch to Varsho high again, 3-1. And George Kirby has just not looked himself tonight. Blue Jays have hit him around, especially in the third and fourth innings. We're in the fourth right now. 3-1 offering in there. A slider for strike two. Speaking of the bunt, I mean, you're not going to do it now, two strikes, but he could have got real funky. IKF's got a lot of speed, maybe a steal and bunt. George Springer on deck, though. 3-2 pitch. 
pop up behind third. Rojas ranging back in a foul territory on the side warning track, reaches out, and he made the catch right before hitting into that short retaining wall. Nice play by the young third baseman. There are two outs. That was a really tough play. I thought that ball was probably 10 rows deep, but Rojas kept going after it and makes that play right in front of the short wall in foul territory there. Really, really nice play from Rojas. So that'll be out number two. Still a runner in scoring position. One run in this inning for the Blue Jays, who lead 4-0. George Springer up, one for two with an RBI single in the third. IKF on second in the pitch. Line drive to right field. That'll get down for a base hit. IKF gets the wave. Throw to the plate from Hanniger. Bounces in late. It's 5-1 Blue Jays. Two hits and two RBIs today for the leadoff hitter, George Springer. Another missed spot from George Kirby. That fastball was supposed to be in on his hands, and he just leaves it out over the middle. George Springer drills it to the opposite field using the big part of the field. Again, that's a great sign for a hitter. If you can use the big part of the field, Joey Votto said this in spring training, good hitters use the big part of the field. George Springer does that right there. The Blue Jays up to eight hits. And George Kirby in danger here of not getting out of the fourth. He remains in, though, with Trent Thornton warming in the right field bullpen. Springer on first. Guerrero at the plate. 0 for 2. The pitch. Inside. Ball one. It'd be nice if Vlad got into one right here. He has found his way to first base both times, but hasn't hit the ball yet so far. Reached on an error and a fielder's choice ground ball. Right on right pitch. Called strike. Ooh. If that was the one right there. <laughs> yeah, nine, 94 mile per hour sinker, sinker right over the heart of the plate. I mean, that was the pitch to hit. But clearly not the best day from George Kirby. He is not usually touching 94 often. Springer takes off on the 1-1. Pitches low a ball. Throw down to second. Bounces. Skips into center field. Springer gets up from second. He'll run to third. He had the base stolen anyway, but advances on the Cal Raleigh error. And the Blue Jays are running wild in this series. That's their fourth stolen base. And you mentioned earlier, Cal Raleigh usually pretty good at throwing runners out, but two back-to-back -back stolen bases off of Cal Raleigh and not really good throws either as he throws that one into center field. The first one that hopped, there was a shot there to make the pick and play. That one... Kind of tailed off to the right. Springer on third now. Guerrero at the plate. Two outs, the 2-1. Hit hard on the ground to short. Picked up by Crawford. Falling away. Sets his feet. Throws to first. And ends the inning. The Blue Jays score two more on three hits. And they lead 5-0 as we go to the fifth. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball. Brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center. Streaming at Sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. The 2024 election on Sirius XM. The fight for our democracy. That's been the work of my first term. Thrilled to be back with thousands of proud American patriots. Where every voice matters. I'm as far left as you can get. This president has not complied with his oath. Left, right, center, decided, or undecided. We have to use our voices. We have to stand up for what we believe. The only place for every perspective and your voice about your vote. On Sirius XM. Fantasy Sports Radio is helping you win your fantasy leagues right now on Channel 87. It's a home run for Ronald Acuna. From in-season fantasy baseball management to daily fantasy basketball to getting you ready for the NFL draft, Fantasy Sports Radio is here to help you dominate. How you manage your team day in and day out will be the difference in where you finish in 2024. Fantasy Sports Radio, your home for fantasy sports. Channel 87 and on the all-new Sirius XM app. March Madness is finally here. For the best analysis. That team is going to be a tough out. And coverage of the ACC teams and the NCAA tournament. Tune into Sirius XM ACC Radio. From the title contenders to the Cinderella teams, we've got you covered through the national championship in Phoenix. Holy smokes, what a play by R.J. Davis. It's all on Sirius XM ACC Radio, Channel 371, and the all-new Sirius XM app. Fantasy Sports Radio is helping you win whichever fantasy sport you play. Right now on Channel 87 and on the all-new Sirius XM app. At Radio Network. 
Five nothing Blue Jays as we go to the fifth. Chris Bassett back on the rubber, and it seems like every time he gets out there, his lead has just grown and grown. He'll start off with right-handed hitting Mitch Garver, trying to protect this five nothing lead. The first pitch called strike one. Garver 0 for 1, grounded into a double play in the second. Bassett's dealt with a little bit of trouble. Base runners in the first, second, and third. Two guys on in the third. 0-1 outside, one ball, one strike. But he's only given up one hit today. Three walks and one single. Josh Rojas, the nine hitter and third baseman, hit the single. He's due up fourth this inning. Right on right pitch. Swing and a miss at the breaking ball. That was the 75 mile per hour sweeper, one and two. Garver up first, Cal Raleigh and Dominic Canzone do after him. One, two, swing and a miss. After slowing it down to 75, he speeds it up to 94 and Garver had nothing for it, one down. He's been so good at that tonight. It just the Seattle Mariners offense it almost seems like they're lost. He's been throwing that good sinker in, and then he throws that 70-mile-an-hour EFIS, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> and then he elevates the fastball. He's done that so often today, and the, and the Mariners' offense is just lost right now. Here's the switch hitter, Raleigh. The pitch. High ball one. This fifth inning is brought to you by Desjardins Insurance, helping Canadians through it all. Desjardins Insurance, insurance with a heart so big it shows. Visit Desjardins.com slash heart today. 1-0 to Raleigh. Fouled back near us, just under our feet. 1-1. One and one. Raleigh coming off a 30-homer season. By far, led catchers in Major League Baseball in home runs. Next closest was Francisco Alvarez at 25. The 1-1. Just a little bit outside, 2-1. If Danny Jansen stays healthy, can he hit 30 homers? I think so. Now, I think he gets hurt a little bit by the fact that the DH spot isn't as open as it was. Danny has a 20-homer season, but the Blue Jays had him DH a lot. The 2-1. Foul tipped into the glove, two and two. But if you projected out Danny's year last year, and he's never going to play 162 games, no catcher is. Raleigh at 145 last year was a lot. Pardon me, Jansen hasn't hit 20, but he hit 17 last year in 86 games. What's the mo- what's what's an average catcher now? 120, 130, something like, like a that. starting catcher. Yeah, I mean, if you you probably factor in a couple DH days or a couple substitution days, I don't know that it's 120 starts. Guys are catching a little bit less than they did before. Two two, check swing on a pitch high, full count. Catching is so hard on your body. I, yeah. caught, I caught all the way through college, and I would have bruises all up and down my arms. I'd wake up, and my knees would be sore. I don't know how guys do it. 3-2 to the Mariners catcher. Popped up deep down the left field line, but into the seats. Still 3-2. Well, I was a lefty, so I was never burdened <laughs> with those. But there was one time, and again, I was not a very high-level player, but for my high school team... <laughs> All of the catchers got hurt simultaneously. I was the captain. Someone needed to catch, so I did it. Man, did it go poorly. I mean, it's so <laughs> many. You cannot jump into that position, and it hurt a lot. I was hoping you'd say it went really well. 3-2. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Back-to-back Ks to start off the fifth. Two down. Let's take a look at the St. Louis Bar and Grill out-of-town scoreboard. Maple Leafs trying to make a push for an extra home game in their opening round playoff series. Three points back right now of the Florida Panthers. One game in hand, five games to go for the Maple Leafs. They're in New Jersey right now. First pitch to Dominic Canzone, outside 1-0. And the Maple Leafs just scored to make it a 3-2 game. Nick Robertson opened the scoring for the Leafs after back-to-back goals for the Devils. Tyler Bertuzzi and Mark Giordano 
Swing and a miss there. Big hack by Canzone. It's one and one. I was hoping you'd have me guess who scored again. Yeah, he had the assist on the third <laughs> goal, but not not Austin Matthews. But if I'm not watching the game, obviously, if if the box score reads correct, the Maple Leafs scored two goals in the span of nine seconds in the second period. One one pitch is high. Two and one. I don't think that's the record, but it's got to be pretty close. That's our check on the St. Louis Bar and Grill out of town scoreboard. 5 0 Toronto over Seattle on the diamond with two outs, the 2 1 to Canzone. High ball three. Base is empty for Bassett, too, who's retired six in a row. Started with Julio Rodriguez grounding into a double play with first and second and one out in the top of the third. He hasn't let anyone on since. 3 1 pitch. Batter went around on a high fastball, 3 and 2. Ooh, that thing was nasty. Sinker, 93. Started down the middle and almost ended up off the plate. And that's really his pitch. As much as he throws everything at you, he's going to throw that more than half the time and work everything off the sinker. If it's good, he's probably going to have a good day. Bassett only has three on the clock as he steps on the rubber. Into the motion with two. The 3-2 pitch. Missed inside. Ball four. Tried to get Canzone to chase a breaking ball down and in. And it's a two-out walk. Bringing up Josh Rojas, the lone Mariner with a base hit today. Bassett was actually shaking his head like it was a positive pitch. It was a good pitch. It was a, it was a, a slider down and in. Obviously excited about that pitch. Here's Bassett's 81st pitch of the night. It's a breaking ball that hits the bottom part of the zone. 0-1. Runner on first, two outs, 5-0 Blue Jays top of the fifth. Toronto out hitting Seattle 8-1. The 0-1. Loop to left, Schneider goes back, now racing in, will make the catch overhead and end the inning. Two out walk stranded, Chris Bassett continues to blank the Mariners through four and a half innings of work. It's 5-0 Blue Jays. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Sirius XM's 2024 NFL Draft Preview Show. Experts from NFL Radio, College Sports Radio, and Fantasy Sports Radio analyze the top prospects in the NFL Draft, covering each player's time in college and how they'll transition to the National Football League. Romadute! Touchdown, Washington! The Sirius XM Sports 2024 NFL Draft Preview Show. Tomorrow night at 7 Eastern on College Sports Radio Channel 84 and NFL Radio Channel 88. The NASCAR Cup Series is on Sirius XM. We're back on the track. Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Eastern. It's the Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 400. From Texas Motor Speedway. On Sirius XM NASCAR Radio Channel 90. In the car. And on the all-new Sirius XM app. Get closer to everything that moves you wherever you are with the Sirius XM app. Let's make some smoke and drink some beer. Yeah. 47365. Coverage of all things NASCAR. All things NASCAR happens exclusively on Sirius XM NASCAR Radio Channel 90. Network. Welcome to the Timbermark Broadcast Group. I'm Ben Schulman alongside Chris LaRue, Show Ali, our host and producer, Andrew Adams, and Tom Young, our technical directors. Blue Jays up 5-0 over the Mariners. Back half of the fifth, and a familiar face with some rec specs on him is pitching here at Rogers Center. Mariners reliever Trent Thornton takes over after an abbreviated four-inning start for George Kirby. Thornton squaring off with his old teammate, Bo Bichette. The right-hander sets high and delivers. Bichette hits a chopper foul. Carlos Fables makes the stop. The third base coach picking it up on the bare hand. 0-1. Trent Thornton was designated for assignment by the Blue Jays in late July last year. And then... Traded off the waiver wire for Mason McCoy. A one. High, one ball, one strike. A 
guy, though, who for a couple seasons was one of the mainstays of the Blue Jays staff. 1-1. One, one. Bichette hits a fly ball. Shallow center. Rodriguez started back, but he'll race it in time to make the catch. One out. Yeah, in 2019, he had 29 starts for the Blue Jays. Full regular member of the rotation. And even made 30 appearances out of the pen in both 2021 and 2022. Now in his first full season with the Mariners. He can provide some length as... You may be able to tell from that starting experience. His pitch to Justin Turner. Big swing and a miss. Turner going out of his shoes at that 97-mile-per-hour fastball. 0-1. And, and I don't remember seeing 97. When no, he he's revved it up. He's revved it up for sure. The 0-1. Turner with a liner up the middle. Down for a base hit. That'll be a single for Turner. His second base knock of the day. He's 2-3. for three. And again, just an elevated slider. Thornton kind of spins it up there, but Justin Turner so good at just driving the ball, using the big part of the field, hits that line drive right back up the middle. Here's Davis Schneider looking to get aboard for the first time today. Trent Thornton in his first inning of work deals with a runner on and one out. The pitch. Inside, ball one. Following Schneider's plate appearance, we'll take a look at the injury report. one -oh. Swing and a miss. Are we going to take a look at how many dogs have been eaten as well? We can look at that. <laughs> Does, are you saying that that contributes to future injury? 1-1. <laughs> Outside. Two balls and one strike. It has slowed down quite a bit. The first inning or so, I was shocked at how many dogs were eaten. We'll hit the dogs in the bottom of the sixth. All right. So stay, stay uh, that's why I'm not that. saying the number. I'm not sure when we're supposed to talk about it. 2-1. Two, Swing and a miss. Two and two. Shocking. The people love the loony dogs. <laughs> Almost as much as they love the Don't. mustache of David Schneider. 2-2 <laughs> two, two to Schneider. Lifted behind the plate, foul off to the right side. Raleigh ditches his mask, called off by Ty France, who makes the catch. Two down. Let's look at the injury report brought to you by Bergmanis Prira Personal Injury Lawyers. If life has thrown you a curveball and you're striking out with your insurance company, get ahead of the count and call Bergmanis Prira Personal Injury Lawyers. You focus on getting better, and Bergmanis Prira will take care of the rest. Visit bplawyers.ca. Well, I think it's good news. Not a ton to report. For the Blue Jays, the one real injury question asked to John Schneider is, why is Kevin Kiermeyer not in today? Is his back okay? First pitch to Kevin Biggio called strike one. Kiermeyer in one of the games in New York was pulled out of the lineup late with some lower back tightness. But the report was no, he's all good, just a regular rotation. They want to keep Schneider in right now. They get Varsho in, and Kiermeyer gets a rest. Biggio bounces a ball foul, 0-2. So that's really all I got. And no news is typically good news on the injury report. Well, yesterday it took you three innings to go there was through a the lot in of injury news. report. 0-2 pitch down and away. Foul tipped, though, off the bat of Kevin Biggio. Tried to check his swing, but it nicked off the bat, and the Turner single is stranded. Scoreless first inning of work for Trent Thornton after 5-5. Five. 5-0 five Blue Jays. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. We're two men and a truck, and we've got lots of men and lots of trucks. Whether you're planning a move to a new home or to a new office down the hall, big or small, we move them all. We even sell packing and moving supplies. But no matter what you need, we'll do it with a smile. With a 96% referral rating and the professionalism you can trust, the choice is simple. So when you're planning your next move, call Two Men and a Truck. Two Men and a Truck, the movers who care. At Crown Rust Control Center, protection runs deep. Because every Crown Rust Control Center is owned by a local family who cares beyond business. Your Crown Rust Control Center is 100% committed to their product, to you, to their community, which is your community. Protecting you and what matters to you is equally important as protecting your vehicle. 
Did you know spring's the best time of year to protect your vehicle from rust? For a special spring offer, find your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center at crown.com. I am by your side. Got a heart so big. On this you can rely. No mountains too tall for the strong boost to climb. I am by your side. That was Desjardins Insurance. Playing insurance with a heart so big, it shows. Tune in for your auto and home coverage at Desjardins.com slash heart. For this life I cannot change. Hit it hit this is George Springer, and you're listening to Toronto Blue Jays Baseball on the Sportsnet Radio Network. Chris Bassett into the wind. The sixth inning underway with his first pitch to J.P. Crawford. It's low ball one. Five nothing Blue Jays. Appreciate you hanging out with us on this Tuesday evening. Blue Jays looking to win their first series in 2024. Won the opener yesterday. The 1-0. Called strike, one and one. And they're off to probably even a better start today. Toronto scoring five runs between the third and fourth innings. Chris Bassett's been sharp too, his one one destroyed foul. That one's gonna go off the 400 level boxes and almost ricochet all the way back down onto the field, down the right field line, landed in the front row of seats. The one, two. Called strike three. Seventh K of the day for Bassett. One down. J.P. Crawford did not like that call. Might have been a hair high, but a really, really good pitch from Chris Bassett. Here comes Julio Rodriguez. First pitch, he shows bunt. Pulls back, it's called strike one. Rodriguez, a guy who can hit for major power, but he is just not off to a great start so far this year, trying to do anything to get aboard. The 0 1. High and tight. I love that pitch against guys that can hit homers. Just come in with the sinker up at the hands. You take away their, their ability to, to really extend the arms, a lot like Giancarlo Stanton, Aaron Judge, those guys specifically. 1-1 one, one pitch, hit foul, and off to the right side. 1-2. and two. Speaking of those guys on the St. Louis Bar and Grill out of town scoreboard, the Yankees have doubled their lead over the Marlins. They now lead 2-0 because Giancarlo Stanton doubled in Juan Soto. That's why I said that. Yeah. You had I was right setting there. you up. I was yeah. giving you a layup. That's team chemistry right there. <laughs> One, two to Rodriguez. Off the end of the bat, a liner to right field. Springer will have to jog over and watch it drop in front of him. He fields it on two bounces. Second hit of the day for the Mariners. A one-out single here in the sixth. The sixth inning is brought to you by Desjardins Insurance. Helping Canadians through it all. Desjardins Insurance. Insurance with a heart so big it shows. Visit Desjardins.com slash heart today. Speaking of Marlins Yankees, though, I saw a crazy stat today that relates to our check on the St. Louis Bar and Grill out of town scoreboard. Give it to you in a second. First Jorge Polanco, the switch hitter. Bats left with one out and a runner on. Pass it from the stretch. Misses low, 1-0. So if you go 2017 to now, and 2017 was the last year Giancarlo Stanton was a Marlin, and look at home runs hit as a Marlin. Stanton still has more home runs than anyone has hit as a Marlin since. 1-0 pitches in there, strike one. He hit 59 in 2017. Now, they haven't had that many mainstays, and that's a big part of it. Jazz Chisholm has 55. He's been hurt a lot as well. But Stanton is number one still. 1-1, one, one, fouled off, 1-2. One and two. And, I mean, they didn't have the successes of maybe 97 or 03 when they won the World Series, but Stanton is out and out one of the best Marlins that they've ever had. Polanco, the former twin at the plate. Rodriguez on first. Bassett's 1-2. High, two balls, two strikes. 
Do you think that Stanton would have been able to hit 500 homers? And I guess he still could. He's not. Is that he's not that old? I believe. But do you think he could have been at 500 by now if he had stayed healthy? Oh yeah, I I think he almost certainly is. The two two. Hard hit ball to right field. Springer curling toward the line. It bounces in front of him. He leaps to wrangle in the hop and tosses it back to second. Rodriguez had to wait a little bit to see if that ball was going to be caught. Deked by Springer. So it's another single. Runners on first and second. I mean, if you look for Stanton, I believe, and I'll confirm this, he had a two-season stretch where he played like 40 total games combined. Now, one of them is 2020, but he played 18 games in 2019. And then we're not even talking about just how much it's hurt him, not just in missed games, but as a player overall. I think if he stays healthy, he's probably at 500 now. I think he should have been the next 600 home run guy, really. And by age 28, so even counting his first year with the Yankees, he had hit 305. I mean, we saw him in spring training. We saw him this past weekend. He can still crush a baseball. For sure. He's just not... He crushes them when he squares them up. He's just not squaring up as many as before. Mound visit from Pete Walker just concluded. Here comes Ty France. First and second, Chris Bassett in trouble for the first time since the third. Five nothing Blue Jays, one out, top of the sixth. The pitch. France takes down and away. That pitch bounced, 1-0. and Bassett probably nearing the end here. 96 pitches. And both Trevor Richards and Tim Mazo warming up for the Blue Jays. The 1-0. Down and away, 2-0. Had only given up one hit before this inning. The Blue Jays certainly don't want to let the Mariners back into the game if they can avoid it. Peak set second. Spin and a throw to second. Biggio crept in there, but Rodriguez dove back first. Julio putting his arms out wide like... We're down five runs. I'm not <laughs> stealing right now. <laughs> Laughing with Biggio a little bit. The 2-0. Fouled over the screen and into the 200 level right side. Two balls and one strike. Ty France is dangerous. 0 for 2 today with two strikeouts, but three hits yesterday. He was an all-star back in 2022, contended for the batting title for a while. 2-1. Liner to center. Varsho came in for a moment but backs up. Will make the catch. Rodriguez tags but doesn't go anywhere. Throw goes into Biggio at short. Two outs. That's an intimidating pitch to throw right there. A fastball on the inside part of the plate to a really good power hitter. Chris Bassett hits his target, and Ty France just hits a weak fly ball to center field. I think Bassett understands where he is in his pitch count and in his game. He doesn't have time to mess around at this point. Maybe he gets a shot at the two Mitches coming up in Hanniger and Garver. Both right-handed hitters, but Cal Raleigh, who would go after them, would bat left. How long have you been waiting to say that? Honestly, a long time. A long time. Alejandro Kirk giving some signs to the infield. First and second, two outs. Five-nothing Blue Jays, top of the sixth. Pass it, looking in at Kirk. Comes set, stares at the runner at second, and delivers home. Breaking ball fouled, 0-1. Hanniger 0-for-1 with a walk and a fly out to left. In a lineup right now that is just desperate for offense, his 730 OPS, one of the best. It's third best in the lineup right now for Seattle. The one-time All-Star Hanniger back in the box, 0-1. Fly ball, deep left field. Varsho ranges to left center, waves off Schneider, makes the catch, and ends the inning. That will likely be it for Chris Bassett, who pitches six impressive scoreless innings, middle of the sixth. 5-0 5-0 Blue Jays at Rogers Center. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Merging influences from Afropop to chamber music. 
Vampire Weekend helped reshape the sound of indie rock and alternative. As their fifth album, Only God Was Above Us, arrives, hear the story behind it. I just started playing this riff. This had the feel of a good, simple pop song. Alongside nearly two decades of indie classics. Vampire Weekend Radio, all month in the Sirius XM app. Hello, Blue Jay fans. I'm Craig Ballard, host of your daily Locked On Blue Jays podcast. Locked On Blue Jays is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked On Blue Jays brings you the latest Blue Jays news and analysis and breaks down all of the action. Locked On Blue Jays is everything a Blue Jays fan could want all in a 30-minute daily podcast. Download Locked On Blue Jays right now on the SXM app, available with all trials and popular plans, or wherever you get your podcasts. Search Locked On Blue Jays. Wake up! Wake up, everybody! This is Steve Phillips from the leadoff spot on MLB Network Radio. Join me and former Major League Baseball players Eduardo Perez and Xavier Scruggs as we react to all the latest news and scores across baseball and have plenty of fun along the way. Steve, you were so right about that. I don't know if anybody else thinks we're funny, but I think we're funny. Why are you putting us (laughs) or we into this? The leadoff spot, weekdays at 7 a.m. Eastern on MLB Network Radio, Channel 89, and on the SiriusXM app. In season or out of season, the number one place for college sports is Sirius XM College Sports Radio, Channel 84. No network. New pitcher for the Mariners in the bottom of the sixth inning. Austin both takes over for Seattle. Blue Jays up 5-0. I'm Ben Schulman. To my left is Chris LaRue. Alejandro Kirk, Isaiah Kiner-Falefa, and Dalton Varsho will hit this inning. That's 7-8-9 in the Blue Jay order. Starting with Kirk, who's 0-2 with a pair of ground outs. The pitch. Called strike. Kirk bends the back knee, but does not swing. Both deals from the right side. Blue Jay's familiar with him from his days with the Orioles. The 0-1. Kirk bends the knee again. This pitch was high. One ball, one strike. Both spent 2022 and 23 with Baltimore. This is first year with Seattle, the 1-1. Low ball two. This is his third team, though, because he came up with the Nationals, was a fifth rounder by Washington out of the University of Washington, although that's the state, not the city. And then he played professionally in the city, the 2-1 outside 3-1. Kirk tapping the plate, looking out toward Voth, who kicks and delivers. High ball four. Alejandro Kirk will take a leadoff walk. IKF coming up. And last time we saw him, he hit an RBI double and then came around to score on a George Springer hit. We'll do some hot dog talk following IKF. (laughs) That's what I've been waiting for. I know. Right on right pitch. IKF takes high, 1-0. Both the third pitcher today for Seattle. Trent Thornton, the former Blue Jay, pitched one inning, one hit, one strikeout. Cal Raleigh going to talk with both, so we can hot dog talk right now. Calling all hot dog lovers. Maybe going big tonight. Next week, get ready for a mouth-watering experience. The second Looney Dogs night, Tuesday, April 16th. Presented by Schneider's. Don't miss out on the action and join us in surpassing our record number of hot dogs eaten. Visit BlueJays.com slash Looney Dogs to learn more and get your ticket today. Almost 54,000 hot dogs consumed so far today. We're in the bottom of the the sixth. The 1-0. Called strike. Is that a lot, though? It's just two per... Two per person. They're not that big. You know, I stuff a lot of numbers in my head. The average loony dogs consumed is not what I have right now. <laughs> Swing and a miss on the 1-1. One, one. It's 1-2. One and two. I, I could be wrong. It was being tracked a lot last year. I think that there were some two per nights. 
two dog per person. One two pitch, chopped softly to third. Rojas charging. He's going to see if it'll go foul. It won't. It stays fair on the infield turf. Swinging bunt single for Kiner Falefa. Kirk up to second. First and second for the Blue Jays with nobody out. And IKF will gladly take that hit. Didn't even make it to the third base bag, but in the box score, that is a scorched baseball. And he's four for seven now because of it at home to start the Rogers Center campaign. All right, back to the Looney Dogs. Well, we passed 54K. <laughs> it was 53,900 last time we looked up. Now it's 54-101. Here's Dalton Varsho. The pitch. Fouled off. Line shot. Into the first base dugout. He roped that one, but the Mariners got out of the way. 0-1. That looked like it went right over Luis Castillo's head. Oh, yeah. And it hit kind of the front facing of the dugout roof and bounced back at them. 0-1 pitch is cranked again. But this one fouls still down the right field line a little bit further. So Varsho getting on that sweeper, but still out in front of it. Oh, 2 Off the end of the bat, a looper up the middle, picked up on a hop by Crawford. He'll throw to second for one. That's the only play he can make. Pretty nice play at that for the former gold glover. J.P. Crawford retires Kiner Falefa trying to advance first to second. Kirk moves up from second to third. Varsho is safe at first. It's runners on the corners with one out for George Springer. Yeah, that was a really good play from J.P. Crawford. Stabbing that hit, that ball on the backhand and then making kind of an underhand throw to Jorge Polanco at second base. Good play all around. Soft liner is a fielder's choice for Varsho. Springer two for three, two RBI singles. The pitch. Matt is off the handle, foul to the right side, 0-1. Well, Dal Dalton Varsho, who just had that fielder's choice, at least it was part of his name, name to former Philly Darren Dalton and to tie this all together. The Phillies had dollar dogs. They don't have it anymore. Next pitch to Springer, grounded sharply up the middle. Picked up by Crawford, tosses to second for one, back over to first, 6-4-3, inning-ending double play. The two leadoff base runners for the Blue Jays, end up being retired and stranded and Toronto will take their 5-0 lead to the 7th. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball brought to you by your local family owned Crown Rust Control Center streaming at sportscent.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Timber Mart is Canada's building center. A solid neighbor to call upon when you've got a job to do. Your dependable home improvement store that offers the added value of Air Miles Reward Miles with every purchase of $15 or more. Visit TimberMart.ca. At Crown Rust Control, protection runs deep. Because every Crown Rust Control Center is owned by a local family who cares beyond business. Your Crown Rust Control is 100% committed to their product, to you, to their community, which is your community. Protecting you and what matters to you is equally important as protecting your vehicle. Did you know spring's the best time of year to protect your vehicle from rust? For a special spring offer, find your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center at crown.com. We're two men in a truck. The movers who care. You never know when cardiac arrest can happen. That's why each and every one of our trucks carries a life-saving Mikey defibrillator as part of our Mikey on Board program. Whether we're on the highway or in front of your house, we're prepared to help anyone whose heart may skip a beat. The Mikey Network has saved many lives, making Mikeys accessible to the public. And now they're on board our trucks. We're two men in a truck. Two men and a truck. The movers who care. Timber Mart always has plans to help you with your plans. Your home, your cottage, your garage, whatever needs your attention first, check the most visited spot on our website for ready-to-order plans to get the job done with Canada's Building Center. Visit TimberMart.ca. This is Toronto Blue Jays baseball. He dived and he made the catch. The catch. On Sportsnet 590 The Fan and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Top of the seventh inning in downtown Toronto. 5-0 Blue Jays lead the Mariners. And Chris Bassett, the starter, is back on the mound. Not sure that either of us expected this. I'm Ben Schulman. He's Chris LaRue. Bassett's pitch count at 101 to start this inning. But they'll leave him out there to face Mitch Garver. 
Well, I'm surprised that he's out on that mound, but he must feel good because he looks good. And he's also a guy that threw 200 innings last year. I'm sure he wants to get back to that number. 101 was the exact pitch count. Jose Barrios was taken out in the seventh inning yesterday. First pitch of the seventh. Garver pops up, foul territory, playable for Guerrero, the first baseman, on the side warning track. He makes a two-handed catch. One down. And that'll be helpful to the Bassett cause. One pitch and one out to start the inning. Just like they wrote it up. There you go. Blue Jays did use a ton of relievers in New York in the second and third games with short starts from Kevin Gosman and from Bowden Francis, respectively. They taxed the bullpen a bit, so maybe they're taking every inch they can with the starters here, especially with a 5 nothing lead. Pitch to Cal Raleigh. Hit on the ground, foul. Down the right field line, 0-1. The Mariners are helping him out right now, just swinging at the first two pitches. One out, base is empty, top of the seventh. Three hits allowed, four walks, and seven strikeouts so far for Chris Bassett in six and a third. The 0-1. Swing and a miss. 94. That's even more than his average usually on that sinker. It's 0-2. Yeah, there's still some gas left in that tank. Raleigh asks for time and steps out. Good time for us to look at the St. Louis Bar and Grill out of town scoreboard where the Yankees are now up 3-0 on the Marlins. Juan Soto with an RBI single, scoring John Birdie, the former Marlin. 0-2 to Raleigh. Chopper to first, again drifts foul. Pass it, taking his time, now back on the rubber. Puts the ball in his glove with two on the clock. Into the wind at the last second, his 0-2 again. Swing and a miss. Beat him with the splitter. Eight Ks today for Chris Bassett. And I have to say, that was probably his nastiest pitch of the day. A really good split finger, almost Trevor Richards-like. Started down the middle and dropped right off the table. So the decision to leave him in looking good so far. His pitch to left-handed hitting Dominic Canzone. Outside ball one. Chris Bassett's pitch count up to 107. The 1-0 just outside. You rarely see pitch counts like this this early in the season. I mean, even in today's baseball, you don't even see it that often later in a season. It happens, but Chris Bassett, a veteran guy, doesn't throw crazy hard either. 2-0. High fly ball left field. Schneider going back. He's at the wall. He turns around. It's gone. On pitch 109, the first big mistake for Chris Bassett. A solo home run for Dominic Canzone. His third home run of the season, and it's now 5-1 Blue Jays with two outs in the top of the seventh. That was just a fastball that was left right over the middle of the, of the plate, and Canzone does not miss it, drilling it into left field. That was actually a good approach, taking that pitch and driving it the other way. For reference, Chris Bassett threw 109 pitches four times last year in over 30 starts. His first pitch to Josh Rojas inside 1-0. and that was his 110th. He only threw 110 pitches three times. Once, he threw 113. The 1-0. Ground ball foul bouncing into the Mariners' first base dugout, 1-1. One one. John Schneider is getting a little antsy down there, walking around, talking to Pete Walker. I mean, this is obviously his last batter no matter what happens. They've sat Tim Mesa down. Trevor Richards is definitely loose, though. The 1-1. One one. Slow breaking ball. Strike two. After the homer, 5-1 Toronto. Two outs, base is empty. Two outs, top of the seventh. The 1-2. Missed high and outside. That was the 113th. So Chris Bassett is going to throw more pitches in this game when he releases the next one than he threw in any game 
all of last season. Two two pitch. Hit foul to the left side. Rojas just reached out and spoiled that one. Ro rolling it just past the Blue Jays third base dugout. I'm sure Chris Bassett is an absolute nightmare for the training staff. He's always moving around, stretching, bending at the waist. Making a face here. <laughs> crouching behind the mound Shaking there. his arm. 2-2. Two -two. Bloop to left. Down for a base hit in left center. Varsho picks it up on two hops. Rojas at first, and I think that will do it. 115 pitches for Chris Bassett. Six and two-third innings. Of one run ball for now. Trevor Richards will try to preserve that and a deserved standing ovation for the right hander. With Toronto up 5 1, two outs and a runner on first in the top of the seventh. Let's go to baseball control. Here's today's host, Sho Ali. Thank you very much, Ben. A reminder before we check on the St. Louis Bar and Grill out of town scoreboard that Blair and Barker have J stock today. They will take your phone calls after the final out. Blair will throw out those numbers once this game is officially in the books. In the NHL, on that St. Louis Bar and Grill out-of-town scoreboard, 13 games on the schedule tonight. We'll start with the Leafs taking on the Devils in New Jersey. Leafs lead at 3-2 in the third period. Bertuzzi and Giordano scoring nine seconds apart in the second period. Leafs stock with J.D. Bunkus and Sam McKee will follow on YouTube and Sportsnet Plus after the final horn. Elsewhere in hockey, Panthers lead the Sens uh, 2 nothing. Lundell and Cousins both scoring for the Cats. Flyers at Habs. Montreal leading 6 nothing at the Bell Center. Uri Slavskovsky with a hat trick tonight. If the Flyers do in fact lose this game after trailing 6 nothing, it'll be their eighth straight loss. In Beantown, the Hurricanes lead the Bruins 2-1. to one. Svechnikov and Tara Vinen with goals for Carolina. Svechnikov did in fact hit that lacrosse Michigan goal yet again after review. Maybe a potential playoff matchup later in a couple of weeks. Who knows? And later on tonight, we'll get the Flames in action. They're in San Jose to play the Sharks at 1030 Eastern, 730 Pacific. You can watch it on Sportsnet. Listen to it on Sportsnet 960. The fan in Calgary, Flames Talk, will follow after the game. In the world of baseball, lots of games on, including the Yankees who lead the Marlins 3-0. Alex Verdugo with a solo home run early on. Blue Jays baseball is brought to you by Crown Rust Protection. Trevor Richards, the Silver Fox on the mound at the Ryder Center. Here's Ben Shulman and Chris LaRue. Show that title belongs to Buck Martinez, but I appreciate it also. Blue Jays <laughs> up 5-1, to one, top of the seventh inning. Two outs. Runner on first, J.P. Crawford, top of the order hitter for the Mariners at the plate. Six and two-thirds of really good pitching from Chris Bassett. Richards now out of the pen, delivers, and it's a fastball high, ball one. The Blue Jays have gotten plenty out of Richards so far this season. The 1-0, fastball in there, strike one. Yeah, he's probably be, being used at the same clip that he was last year when he basically hit a wall in July. <laughs> Although less innings, I would <laughs> That's say. That's true, I guess. Same appearance rate. 1-1. One, one. Ground ball to first. Speared by Vladdy. He'll stomp on the bag. That's the inning. Richards comes in, does the job, and ends a great day for Chris Bassett. Six and two-thirds of just one run ball. Seventh inning stretch at the Rogers Center. 5-1 Blue Jays. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. The Blue Jays are inviting you to work from Dome. Put it in your calendar. 307 Weekday starts this season. You can work from Dome with friends or coworkers at Rogers Center. It's a game changer. Make the ballpark your office for the afternoon. Work from Dome, 307 weekday starts. Let's touch base. Check out ticket options on bluejays.com slash work from dome. At Crown Rust Control Center, protection runs deep because every Crown Rust Control Center is owned by a local family who cares beyond business. Your Crown Rust Control Center is 100% committed to their product, to you, to their community, which is your community. Protecting you and what matters to you is equally important as protecting your vehicle. 
Did you know spring's the best time of year to protect your vehicle from rust? For a special spring offer, find your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center at crown.com. I am by your side. Got a heart so big. On this you can rely. No mountains too tall for the strong boots to climb. I am by your side. That was Desjardins Insurance. Playing insurance with a heart so big, it shows. Tune in for your auto and home coverage at Desjardins.com slash heart. Hey, this is Eric Swanson. You're listening to Toronto Blue Jays Baseball on the Sportsnet Radio Network. Big time in a small town. Welcome to the Timberwolf Broadcast booth. I'm Ben Schulman, alongside Chris LaRue, Show Ali, our host and producer today. Andrew Adams and Tom Young, our technical directors, and Blair and Parker will have Blue Jays talk following this game. Blue Jays up 5-1, bottom of the seventh. Another new pitcher, the fourth today for Seattle. It's their new right-handed reliever, Ryan Stanek. The pitch to Vladdy is outside, ball one. Guerrero, Bichette, Turner, two up for the Blue Jays today. Vladdy 0 for 3, reached on an error, reached on a fielder's choice and scored and grounded out to short. Next pitch in the dirt, 2 and 0. Ryan Stanek was relatively human last year in Houston. In 55 appearances, he only had a 4.09 ERA. But in 22 and 59 appearances, he had a 1.15 ERA. 2 0, cut on and missed. Big hack from Vladdy. That's the good one from Stanek, though. 100 miles an hour on the fastball at the top of the zone. Stanek has been, as you mentioned, one of the best relievers in baseball at times. 2-1, swing and a miss. Another 100, and it's 2-2. Two and two. Mariners trying to stay in this game after they tacked on their first run of the ball game with a solo home run in the top of the seventh. Vladdy leading off the bottom of the seventh. Very still as Stanek kicks and delivers. Foul tipped into the glove. 100 again. Strike three. Such an overpowering fastball from Stanek. And that's why he's been so good for so many years. Just here it is. Try to hit it. Usually they don't hit it. Signed a $4 million contract with the Mariners in early March. His pitch to Bo Bichette, high and inside, went with the soft stuff, if you want to call it. That is 89-mile-per-hour slider. Interesting that Richards just pitched for the Blue Jays, Trevor Richards, by the way, and Stanek is now in for the Mariners. Tell you why in a sec. The 1-0. Swing and a miss, 1-1. One and one. Stanek was a first-rounder of the Tampa Bay Rays in 2013 and was traded to the Marlins in 2019 at the deadline with Trevor Richards going the other way to Tampa Bay. 1-1. Bichette takes. It's low. Ball two. This was a guy, though, who was non-tendered, Brian Stanek, by Miami after 2020. Just let him go. Signed with the Astros before that dominant 2021 year you mentioned. 2-1. Bichette fouls it off. 2-2. Two and two. And he is just reaching back for that 100. He's probably thrown about four or five pitches now at 100 miles an hour. Bo Bichette's taking huge hacks. Two-two. High drive, but hooking foul into the seats down the left field line. Stanek is is plenty rested too. Part of the reason they probably brought him in, despite them being down. 5-1, to one, the Mariners down 5-1, to one, is he hasn't pitched since Friday. He's had the longest layoff of any Mariners reliever. 2-2. Two, two. Called strike three. Slider at the top of the zone freezes Bichette. Two strikeouts for Stanek. Two down. Here comes Turner. Bo Bichette did not like that call, but that was actually a good pitch at the top of the zone. A split finger from Stanek. It kind of freezes Bo. He arches his back. Ooh, he didn't like that call, but that was a strike. Really good splitter. Here's Justin Turner, two for three with a double and a single. 
The pitch. Low ball one. Fans get closer to the action than ever before at the newly renovated Rogers Center. The outfield walls have been brought in both baselines. That means great sight lines and being even closer to the big plays in the outfield. Next pitch hit foul. One and one. To experience this change and others around the ballpark, visit BlueJays.com slash ticket packs. Two outs in the home half of the seventh. 5-1 for the home team. 1-1 to Turner. High. With the two hits today, Justin Turner's average up to 324 in the 12th game of the season. The 2-1. Called strike 2-2. That was right down the middle, but at 99 miles an hour. For a guy who averages 98, it feels like his velocity is even a little <laughs> bit up right now. He's sitting 99, 100. Stanek kicks, delivers, and bounces the breaking ball at the plate. Check swing appeal down to first no swing, says Ben May. Yeah, Stanek's got the big fastball, the long blonde hair, the big goatee. He looks like he should be a part of the, the 93 Philadelphia Phillies. <laughs> Hit foul. You seen the show Eastbound and Down before? Uh, Yes, of course. He's very... He's he's got some Kenny Powers in his look. Pay off again. And Turner fouls it off again. That is most certainly not a compliment. (laughs) Unless that's the look you're trying to go for. It worked, for, it worked for Kenny. It did. He had a great career in Mexico. Hey, he was a World Series champion. <laughs> he was. With the Braves? Yes. <laughs> uh, if you haven't seen the show, I apologize. Base is empty. Two outs. The 3-2. And the dirt ball four. Scoots away from Raleigh, who will scamper to his right and pick it up. Schneider aboard, or pardon me, Turner aboard for the third time today. Here comes Schneider. Trying to add some insurance on for the Blue Jays in the bottom of the seventh, up 5-1. to one. I think this is a good matchup. Stanek doesn't really throw that elevated fastball. He likes that, that fastball down in the zone, and so does Schneider. Schneider bats right. The pitch from the righty Stanek. Popped up behind the plate, out of play, 0-1. Because of that Turner battle, Stanek's over 20 pitches after he releases the next one. Maybe he'll make a mistake. The 0-1. And that hit Schneider. Not the kind of mistake I was thinking about. Hit Schneider in the right forearm. And he has taken a second there. Luckily, it was the 89-mile-per-hour splitter. Not that that's going to feel great. But it beats the 100-mile-per-hour fastball. Yeah, Schneider clearly upset. Stanek upset. Nobody thinks that was on purpose, but nobody wants to hit a batter. And nobody wants to get hit by that pitch either. Schneider, though, will reach for the first time today. And Scott Service is going to come out and make a pitching change after 20 pitches from Stanek and back-to-back two outrunners aboard. We'll go back to our host today. Here's Show Ali. Thank you very much, Ben. Before we check out the St. Louis Bar and Grill out-of-town scoreboard, a reminder that we do have Jay Stock after the final out of this game. Players kicking around. He and Barker will throw out the numbers to call after the final out. Let's check out that St. Louis Bar and Grill out-of-town scoreboard. Lots of games going on across Major League Baseball right now, including the Yankees, who lead the Marlins 3-2. The Marlins rallying a little bit here, but this game in the bottom of the seventh inning, Yankees still holding on to that lead. Top of the ninth inning, Brewers lead the Reds 9-5. The Mets being blanked by the Braves 6-0. Middle of the seventh inning, going to bottom seven in Minnesota at Target Field. The Dodgers blanking the Twins 6-0. Astros lead the Royals, pardon me, now tied 3-3. This game in the bottom of the sixth inning. The Cardinals leading the Phillies 3-0. Zach Wheeler had a home run hit off him by Nolan Gorman in that one. Rangers... Lead the Athletics 2-1, middle of the fifth inning, and the Diamondbacks 
lead the Rockies 3-1. to one. Some finals as well. The Tigers rallying for a 5-3 win over the Pirates. Gio Urshela, Kerry Carpenter, and Jake Rogers ripping RBI singles in the ninth inning all off David Bednar, who has now blown his third save in four tries. And at Fenway Park, the Red Sox drubbed by the Orioles, a 7-1 win for Baltimore. Corbin Burns allowing two hits over seven innings of work in the Boston home opener. And the Raptors on the go tonight as well. They're taking on the Indiana Pacers down at Scotiabank Arena. They trail 134-118 with two and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. You can listen to the game on the mainstream on the Sportsnet app and sportsnet.ca slash 590. Eric Smith, Paul Jones down at the arena. They have the call of the game. Will Lou has Raptors reaction after the final buzzer. Blue Jays baseball brought to you by Crown Rust Protection. Back to the Rogers Center. Here's Ben and Chris. Thank you, show. Left-hander Gabe Spire into the game. And the Blue Jays taking out the left-handed hitter, Kevin Biggio. Ernie Clement pinch hits. First and second, two outs. The pitch called strike one. Biggio's day ends at two for three with a stolen base and a run scored. He was very solid today for the Blue Jays. And Clement will get his first opportunity of the series. The 0-1. Loop to the right side and into the seats or off the netting foul. 0-2. Is that netting new down the right field line there? Uh, there was netting there before as far as I'm aware, but it is different netting. Taller netting? Unclear. I have no idea. 0-2. And he hit him right in the ribs. Clement on his hands and knees, struggling to his feet now, and starts a walk toward first stops. Two steps into it. He looks like he's in a world of pain. Back-to-back -back Blue Jays hitters have been hit by pitches, albeit by different pitchers. I can't think of anything worse than coming off the bench late in a ball game and hit, getting drilled in the ribs. He is clearly in some pain right now as Voon Chung looks at him. Looked like the slider from the left-hander Spire, but again, there's no... Actually, it was the sinker. There's no fun pitch to get hit by anyway. A 94-mile-per-hour sinker right in the ribs, the abdomen. I thought it might have glanced off of his arm and got his ribs, but that's watching the replay, that just drilled him directly in the ribs. You could hear kind of a hollow sound as it hit him. Bases loaded after a walk and two hit batters. Spire to Kirk. Called strike one against Alejandro Kirk. 5 1 Blue Jays. Bases are full, two outs. Kirk tied for the team lead in RBI so far with seven. He's tied with Davis Schneider, who's on second base. Turner on third, Clement on first, the 0-1. High, ball one. Imagine coming off the bench and just oh. getting drilled in the ribs. Not fun. And it's two strikes, so you're hanging in there. Life was good about two minutes ago for Ernie Clement. He's got his hands on his knees, <laughs> big lead at first, 1-1. Kirk pops it up foul to the right side out of play. One and two. That was the sinker that hit Clement. Spire will use the sinker and four seamer a fair amount, but he'll see he'll throw a lot of sliders to right-handed hitters. One two. Foul tipped off the glove and back into the backstop. And Spire isn't a soft throwing lefty either. No. He just threw a fastball at 95 miles an hour. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to sit mid 90s. The lead lefty out of this pen. Coming in in relief of Ryan Stanick, who's responsible for the runners on second and third. The 1 2. Kirk lifts the ball to right. Should be playable for Hanniger. Over near the line. Stops. Works back to the middle. Makes the catch. And ends the inning. So the walk and two hit batters stranded. And it'll be 5-1 Blue Jays as we go to the eighth. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball. Brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center. Streaming at Sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. 
This is PGA Tour Pro Smiley Kaufman, and I'm happy to announce that you can now hear me on Sports Grid Radio. Just in time for the Masters, I'm bringing my show, The Smiley Show, to Channel 159, where I'll catch up with other golfers, athletes, and celebrities. Join me tomorrow for the Sports Grid debut of The Smiley Show, where I'll preview the Masters like only I can at 1 p.m. in the East on Sports Grid Radio. Channel 159 in your car and on the all-new SiriusXM app. Are you regretting eating that gas station hot dog? Yeah, we know. We've been there too. This is a message for baseball fans like you. Did you know that you get a channel that's talking baseball 24-7 as part of your Sirius XM subscription? What? Our lineup includes shows hosted by former big leaguers and executives. Plus, you'll hear from 17 managers each week. MLB Network Radio is on Sirius XM Channel 89. Or just search MLB Network Radio on the SXM app. Sirius XM Sports. We're more than just a game. Blue Jays fans, your manager, Sean Schneider, joins MLB Network Radio's Power Alley every other Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern. I got all the confidence in the world in Joe Romano. I've known him for a long time. I know his demeanor. And I, I always say when you're talking about a closer, giving up a couple runs in the ninth inning, it's just so much more magnified than a starting pitcher giving up a two-run homer. Managers at the mic on MLB Network Radio, Sirius XM 89 and the SXM app. It is gone! Jays fans, this is John Schneider, and you're listening to Blue Jays Baseball on Sirius XM. There's the exclamation point for all assembled here at Rogers Center. Radio Network. Join the Toronto Blue Jays in honoring the life and legacy of Jackie Robinson at the ballpark on Monday, April 15th. Be among the first 15,000 lucky fans to receive a special Blue Jays Jackie Robinson 42 hat. Visit BlueJays.com slash promotions to learn more and purchase your ticket today. 5-1 Toronto over Seattle. Second inning of work for Trevor Richards. It's the top of the eighth. Julio Rodriguez, Jorge Polanco, and Ty France do up this inning. The pitch to Rodriguez is low ball one. It's fastball change for Richards. And a good sign for the Blue Jays. Ernie Clement stayed in this ball game playing at third base. He pinch hit for Kevin Biggio. Was hit in the ribs by a pitch. He's at third. IKF moves from third to second. 1-0. High ball two. If you're wondering why they wouldn't just put Clement over at second directly in the spot of Biggio, they've said they'd like to keep him on the left side of the infield to be consistent for this season 2-0 high 3-0 Rodriguez the 2022 American League Rookie of the Year is 1 for 3 today with a single to right field 3-0 he shows bunt pulls back called strike we've seen that a couple times this year where they do the little, the little league fake bunt just to kind of throw the pitcher off you don't really see it that often in the show does it really throw off a major no. league pitcher yeah. no maybe if they wiggled it like they do in, in little <laughs> league three one swing and a miss three and two i knew a guy who would like crouch way down and i mean not like <laughs> bend down a little bit like way down umpires were not sympathetic to that. <laughs> i would say his zone only got bigger because of it Back-to-back strikes have made it a full count. Rodriguez asked for time. He's back in the payoff pitch. Is hit foul behind him. Still three balls and two strikes. Seventh appearance for Trevor Richards. Leads the American League. His 3-2 again. Foul tipped off the mask of Kirk. Still three balls, two strikes. Really uncomfortable swing there from Julio Rodriguez. A good changeup on the inside part of the plate. A little bit elevated, but really good movement to it. 3-2 once more. High ball four. A well-earned walk by Rodriguez to lead off the top of the eighth. Yeah, Richards clearly frustrated. That fastball there was nowhere near the zone, and Julio Rodriguez with the easy take. So Rodriguez getting the sliding mitten on at first base. Here comes Jorge Polanco. One for two, a walk, a strikeout, and a single. Richards offers. 
It's high and outside, ball one. Blue Jays lead five to one, nobody out, runner on first. The pitch. Changeup misses away, two and up. Switch hitter Polanco bats left, and the Blue Jays shifting to the pull side. Bobachette, the shortstop, up the middle. 2 0. That one's called a strike. A changeup to make it 2 and 1. A little bit of a gift there. I think Jorge Polanco's upset with that call. That was about a ball off the plate. Blue Jays getting Chad Green loose right now. The 2 1. Change up that definitely was a strike for strike two. Ernie Clement had been in even with the baseline. He'll back up now with no threat of any sort of bunt for base hit. 2 2. Check swing on a change up low. Three balls and two strikes. Richards delivers, and it's fouled back over the screen and under our feet. I think it's so wild that batters know what's coming. They know a changeup is coming, and they're still out in front of it. And they still chase it a lot of the time. <laughs> 100th percentile in chase rate last year. 3-2 fastball popped up. Because and every once in a while, he'll do that and yeah. kind of try to sneak that 92-mile-an-hour fastball by you. And Jorge Polanco was clearly behind on that. Good defensive swing from him. And swung at a pitch that was likely ball four as well, maybe expecting it to drop. It was high of the zone. Richards offering. Called strike three. Change up at the knees, and there's nothing you can do about that pitch. Polanco turns and walks back to the dugout. One out. And I don't know if Jorge Polanco's upset with the call or upset with himself, but that was a strike, and he kind of stood in the batter's box for a good two or three seconds before slowly walking back to that Mariner's dugout. So one out, a bounce back from Richards after the leadoff walk. Julio Rodriguez on first. Ty France at the plate. Turn and throw to first. Rodriguez dives back safely. He's certainly a threat to run, although I don't know if they'd risk it in this situation. 5-1 Blue Jays. Do you want to potentially make it out on the bases? But Rodriguez swiped 37 bags last year. First pitch is called strike one to Ty France. And although that, that run doesn't matter, we talked about this, I think, the other day. Yeah. They still want to keep that force play at second base. Yes. And keep the double play. Oh, order. one is hit in the air to right. Springer jogging back, stops, takes a step in, makes the catch. Two down. And that would be the big reason the Mariners might want to steal to avoid that double play or, you know, even in this situation now with two outs, let's say a ball gets hit deep in the hole to short or second. Maybe Bobachet or IKF can only go to second. All of a sudden they can't if Julio Rodriguez is standing on second base. Mitch Hanniger is up. 0 for 2 with a walk. The pitch. High drive down the left field line. Hooking toward the corner. Foul. There is not a lot of foul territory anymore down the left field line, but Hanniger found it, and the Blue Jays catch a break. A near miss on a double. It's 0-1. Yeah, he managed to find that, what, about three or four feet down yeah. there? Luckily for the Blue Jays and Trevor Richards, that's a that's a big run standing on second or first base there. Blue Jays up 5-1, to one, two outs, runner on first. All five Toronto runs came in the third and fourth innings. Seattle with a home run coming from Dominic Canzone in the top of the seventh. The lone run that Chris Bassett allowed today in six and two-thirds. 0-1 pitch. Just missed outside. One ball, one strike. I think if Alejandro did a better job of framing that ball, that might have had a chance to be called a strike. He kind of flopped his glove, didn't really give him a chance. Kirk sets up outside. The next pitch is down and away too far, 2-1. Two and one. I'm always surprised when Alejandro kind of does that with a pitch because he's so good at framing balls usually. 
rated by StatCast as one of the better framers in baseball. Even higher ratings in terms of his blocking ability. 2-1. Change up in there. Strike two. A leadoff walk to start this inning by Julio Rodriguez. Then a strikeout and a flyout. Richards trying to strand the runner on first. 2-2 two -two pitch. Low. A little bit outside two. Ball three. Mitch Garver is on deck should the inning continue. 3-2. Hit high down the right field line. Springer giving chase. He'll pull up. That's into the seats. And Julio Rodriguez, who got the head start on the pitch, was all the way at third. He'll have to circle back, make sure he doesn't step on the mound as he weaves back under it and goes to first. He's not trying to get there quickly, that's for sure. Eh, he doesn't have to. Clock doesn't start until everyone's set. <laughs> Rodriguez will get a head start again with 3-2 and two outs. Richards kicks, offers, and a high drive to left. Schneider racing back to the wall. He's run out of room. That ball's gone. Two-run homer, Mitch Hanniger, and all of a sudden, it's a ball game. 5-3, the Blue Jays lead after Hanniger's blast, his second of the season. Hanniger didn't really hit that very hard, 96 miles an hour, only 356 feet. But he got just enough of it to dump it over that left field bullpen. Trevor Richards leaving that changeup up, and he kind of just sticks the bat out and doesn't really do much with it, but just enough. That'll prompt John Schneider to come out to the mound, make a pitching change. With two outs here, nobody on in the eighth. It's gotten a little bit close. Chad Green is going to try and... Stop that. It's 5-3 Blue Jays over the Mariners. Let's go back to baseball control. Here's today's host, Cho Ali. Thank you very much, Ben. Let's check out that St. Louis Bar and Grill out-of-town scoreboard. Lots of finals, lots of games approaching their ends in both Major League Baseball and the National Hockey League. Let's start with the NHL. Lots of games in the books there. Capitals beat the Red Wings 2-1. to one. The Panthers hold on. They do blank the Senators 2-0. The Leafs end up getting a 5-2 win over the Devils in New Jersey. Austin Matthews did score goal number 66 of the season, even strength goal at that as well. 5-2, the Leafs beat the Devils. Leafs talk with J.D. Bunkus and Sam McKee is on right now on YouTube and Sportsnet Plus. Two and 49 seconds to go for the Islanders and Rangers. Islanders lead the Rangers 3-2 on Long Island. Canadians shellacking the Flyers. When we last did this, it was 6-0 Montreal. It is now 9-3 Montreal in that game in Montreal at the Bell Center. The Lightning beating the Blue Jackets right now, 5-2, two minutes to go in that one. Some of the later games getting started as well. The Jets beat the Predators right now in the second period intermission, 3-1. And a little bit later on, we will get the Flames taking on the Sharks in San Jose. You can watch that game on Sportsnet. Listen to it on Sportsnet 960 in Calgary. Flamestock will follow that one as well. In Major League Baseball, you heard the 7-1 final score for the Orioles over the Red Sox. And ESPN's Jeff Passan saying they are calling up prospect Jackson Holiday tomorrow. Blue Jays baseball is brought to you by Crown Rest Protection. Chad Green on the mound. Back to the Rogers Center. Here's Ben and Chris. Thank you, show. Second day in a row that Chad Green pitches against the Mariners. 5-3 now after Mitch Hanniger's homer. Mitch Garver had to play with two outs and the bases empty. Top of the eighth. Green delivers home. And the first pitch is last foul to the left side. 0-1. The right-hander Green making his fifth appearance of the season. They might be asking Chad Green for four outs tonight. The 0-1. Down and away with the breaking ball. One ball, one strike. Green rocks back and fires. Check swing on a pitch down and away. Appeal down to first. No swing, says Ben May. Two balls, one strike. This two-run eighth inning so far. For the Mariners, started the way a lot of tough innings do for pitchers. 
Richards walked the leadoff hitter to one swing and a miss, two and two. But he got two straight outs, looked like it was handled, got two strikes on Hanniger, who fought off some pitches before lofting a ball to left field. Green trying to finish off the eighth. 2-2 two, two to Garber. Swing and a miss. Over top of the breaking ball. Strike out there for Chad Green. And the Blue Jays will try to tack on some insurance in the bottom of the eighth. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center. Streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Everyone dreams of owning their own personal slice of heaven. Now you can, thanks to Fixed Rate Pizza by Pizza Pizza. Until the end of 2024, lock into an extra-large four-topping pizza at a fixed price of $17.99. No matter how bad food prices get this year, your pizza price stays. So why not say no to surge pricing and yes to fixed-rate pizza? Order now from Pizza Pizza. Order pizza pizza that's the A. I am by your side. Got a heart so big, on this you can rely. No mountains too tall for the strong boots to climb. I am by your side. That was Desjardins Insurance, playing insurance with a heart so big it shows. Tune in for your auto and home coverage at Desjardins.com slash heart. is Toronto Blue Jays baseball. Flatty with a huge stretch for the double play. On Sportsnet 590 The Fan and the Sportsnet Radio Network. This copyrighted broadcast is presented by Authority of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership or the Sportsnet Radio Network. First pitch at the bottom of the eighth is high to Isaiah Kiner Falefa. One ball and no strikes. Gabe Spires still in for the Mariners. 5 3 Toronto, the 1 0. Kiner Falefa hits it foul to the right side. 1 and 1. IKF's 2 for 3 today. A double in the fourth, a single in the sixth. 1 1. Again, hits it down the right field line, but again, it slices foul. One and two. Infield plays back and pretty straight up, although the first baseman, France, is way off the line. The one-two. Looper to center. Sprinting in Rodriguez. Pulls up. It drops in front of him. Third hit of the day for Isaiah Kiner Falefa, who's trying to help the Blue Jays regrow their lead. That was once 5 0, now 5 3. And it seems like, first of all, that's a really important run right there. <laughs> but it also seems like Isaiah Kiner Falefa is just continuing to find ways to get on base, to get hits, whether it's via the walk, whether it's via bloop singles like that. He's a lot like Justin Turner, I feel like. Good eye at the plate, takes good pitches with a little bit less power. Here's Dalton Varsho, one for three. Step in a throw over to first by Spire. IKF was on it the whole way. He got back to the back standing. With the five hits in two games to start this series, IKF's average on the season, 313. Still very early. The pitch is called strike one against Dalton Varsho. No outs, runner on first, 5-3 Blue Jays, bottom of the eighth. This is going to be a tough A-B for Varsho. Facing a lefty who throws about 94-95. He's got to really focus in here. The 0-1. Fouled back into the screen. Nothing in two. Only right-handed hitting option on the Blue Jays' bench is Brian Servin. And the Blue Jays 
leading right now. Don't want to take the defense of Dalton Varsho out of the game. But, yeah, this is not an A-B that they would set him up for. 0-2, swing and a miss, strike three. Varsho yeah. goes down, there's one out. Yeah, he looked really uncomfortable on that fastball there. Fastball elevated up in the zone. We all know that Dalton Varsho doesn't love the elevated fastball, but clearly he was expecting something off speed down in the zone. Even bounced. Just an uncomfortable swing there. But like I said, a very tough A-B for Dalton Varsho. Here's George Springer. Two for four, two RBIs. Runner on first, one out. Bottom of the eighth. Spires pitch. Swing and a miss. Springer late on that 92-mile-per-hour fastball. 0-1. Four-seamer and two-seamer for Spire. That was the four-seamer. His 0-1. Pitch bounced. That was his changeup. Doesn't use that a ton. But he threw it there to Springer. It was in the dirt. One ball, one strike. IKF's got speed, but they likely don't risk it here. Spire's going to step and throw over again. First time this plate appearance he's checked on him, but second time in the inning that Spire has been wary of the stolen base ability of Isaiah Kiner-Falefa. Well, that run has been... All of a sudden, important. 5-3 Toronto. The 1-1. Outside, 2-1. and one. I'm Ben Schulman. He's Chris LaRue. Blue Jays led 5-0 until the 7th. Then a solo home run from Dominic Canzone. Then Mitch Hanniger in the 8th hit a two-run shot. Next pitch to Springer is golfed out to right field. Hanniger going back to the edge of the track. He'll make the catch. And there are two down. And Scott Service is not going to let the left-hander Spire go up against Vladimir Guerrero Jr. He'll go to the sixth Mariners pitcher today. Brett DeGust is about to come into the game. But before we see him, let's go back to baseball control. Here's Show Ali. Thank you very much, Ben. Before we check in on the St. Louis Bar and Grill out-of-town scoreboard, another reminder that when this game is over, Blair and Barker have Jay's talk. They will take your phone calls after the final out. Blair will throw out the numbers to call once the game is officially in the books. All right, on the St. Louis Bar and Grill out-of-town scoreboard, the Raptors were in action tonight. They get waxed 140-123 by the Pacers at Scotiabank Arena. It was close at halftime, 65-64. They trailed, but... Of course, the second half did not go their way. Only three more games this season for the Raptors was the final home game as well. They are now 25-53 and on the season. Will Liu has a Raptors reaction for you. It will be available via the Raptors Show podcast feed when he's done. In Major League Baseball, let's check in some scores, including some finals. The Yankees did hold on to beat the Marlins 3-2, the final score in New York. Alex Verdugo with a solo home run early on. Juan Soto had an RBI single. Giancarlo Stanton with an RBI double. They become MLB's first 10-win team in 2024. Some games going on right now include the Rays-Angels game, bottom of the first inning in Los Angeles. Zeros as this game just got started. Nationals-Giants also on the West Coast going to bottom one. Zeros in that one as well. Diamond Max lead the Rockies 3-1. to Astros-Royals tied at three. And the Mets on the board, but they still trail the Braves 6-3. to in Atlanta. Blue Jays baseball is brought to you by Crown Rust Protection. Back to the action. Here's Ben Shulman and Chris LaRue down at the Rogers Center. Thank you, show. Right-hander Brett DeGus is taking his final warm-up pitches right now. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. about to come to the plate trying to break his 0-4 line. Blue Jays up 5-3. Runner on first. Two down. Bottom of the eighth. And this will be the second time in as many days they see DeGus, who came in yesterday for one inning and gave up a run. Isaiah Kiner-Falefa singled off him for an important eighth inning insurance run. Vladdy pinwheels his bat, gets ready to hit with IKF on first. The pitch. Called strike, 96 at the bottom of the zone. Really good take from Vlad. That's a strike, but it's not the pitch that he wants to hit in this situation. That was a good fastball down in the zone. He wants something a little bit elevated early on in the count. The 0-1. Guerrero with a high drive. Deep left field. Canzone backing up, but it'll die right before the track. Canzone makes the catch and ends the inning. 
Lead-off single by IKF stranded, and the Blue Jays will look for a series win when we come back. Top of the ninth inning is next, 5-3 Toronto. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. The greatest guitarist is Eddie Van Halen. What about Prince? You have to include Slash and Jimmy Page. B.B. King and Bonnie Raitt. The Edge changed everything. The debate continues with rebellious riffs and six-string solos on the SiriusXM Guitar Greats channel. All hail International Guitar Month. SiriusXM Guitar Greats on channel 107 and year-round on the SiriusXM app. Get closer to everything that moves you wherever you are. This is C.J. Nikowski. Join me, Ryan Spielborgs, and Brad Lidge every weekday at 2 p.m. Eastern as we give you the player's perspective of what's happening in baseball. He is possessed every time he goes out there right now. This is crazy. There's this energy that certain players bring. It's Loud Outs every weekday at 2 p.m. Eastern on MLB Network Radio, Sirius XM, Channel 89, and the all-new Sirius XM app. Hey, baseball fans, NBA Radio is your home for the best 24-7 hoops talk. LeBron, three for the tie. It's good! Hear nonstop talk from our experts every day and the best games every night as we get you ready for the playoffs and the quest to raise the Larry O'Brien trophy. After 47 years, the Denver Nuggets are finally NBA champions. Don't miss a moment on Sirius XM NBA Radio, Channel 86, in the car, and on the brand new Sirius XM app. Blue Jays fans, John Schneider joins MLB Network Radio every other Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern on Sirius XM 89 and the SXM app. Welcome to the Timbermark Broadcast Booth. I'm Ben Schulman alongside Chris LaRue. Top of the ninth inning, Chad Green pitches to Cal Raleigh, who pops up the first pitch foul out of play. 0-1. 5-3 Blue Jays, top nine. They won the first game of this series, trying to go up 2-0 in this three-gamer on Seattle. Green got the final out of the eighth. They'll ask him for three more here in the ninth. 0-1. Called strike, nothing in two. This is interesting, too, because Chad Green pitched yesterday and threw 23 pitches. Now, he had only pitched once in the previous five days before that. So they're leaning on Green tonight. 0-2. Lifted foul out of play again. Even though he pitched last night, he still has a lot of life on that fastball. That last fastball was up in the zone with that almost invisible high spin rate rate type of fastball at 95 miles an hour. Cal Raleigh. Not quite on it, but gets but fouls it back. 0-2 again. Fouled back once again. Another high fastball that Raleigh chased but did clip. It's 7-8-9 in the Mariner order. Raleigh, Dominic Canzone, Josh Rojas all will bat left. Raleigh's a switch hitter. The other two true lefties. The 0-2. Went with the high fastball again. This time, Raleigh didn't chase. Kirk was actually almost standing up. He'll he'll do that. <laughs> Raleigh asks for time, wipes some sweat from his forehead, puts his helmet back on, and steps in the box. His eye black is really smudged at this point after eight innings of catching for the Mariners. 1-2. High again, a little bit outside as well. Two balls, two strikes. He had a big hit late yesterday, a ninth inning homer for Cal Raleigh, although the Blue Jays won that game 5-2. to two. Raleigh's 0-3 for 3 so far today. 2-2 two, two pitch. Ground ball chopped to second. Scooped up by Kiner Falefa. Overhand throw to first, one out. A practice swing for Dominic Canzone, who steps into the lefty batter's box. One for two today with a walk and a solo homer. He got Seattle scoring started in the seventh. Clement in to shade against the bunt. The pitch. Down and in. Ball one. Everyone else in the infield plays to the pull and deep. Bobachet on the edge of the outfield grass right up the middle. 1-0. Called strike. Breaking ball at the top of the zone. And that home run he hit was impressive. An opposite field homer over the over the bullpen in left field. 
It's a good poke. 1-1. One, one. Down and in, 2-1. and one. Canzone has seven hits this year. Five of them have come in the last three games. He doubled yesterday facing Chad Green. The 2-1. Low three balls and one strike. Toronto, top of the ninth. The pitch. Called strike two. Canzone was walking his way over to first. He's got to turn and come back. Yeah, a bit of a gift there. That was about a ball off the plate. Not really a a close pitch at all, but Chad Green gets the the call there. He'll try to make it worth it. The payoff pitch. High ball four. That brings the tying run to the plate. Josh Rojas is coming up. They're going to pinch run over at first as well. Luke Raley now running at first base for Dominic Canzone. 5-3 5-3 Blue Jays, one out, and a big swing could tie up this game. Rojas hit four home runs last year. Green in the set, rocks back and fires. Fastball for strike one. Rojas two for three today with a pair of singles to left field. The 0-1. Fouled back just under our feet. Nothing in two. Blue Jays have Mitch White getting loose. And the bullpen in left field. 23 pitches for Chad Green yesterday. Here's his 21st today. It's hit high and deep, but foul down the left field line. I'm assuming assuming Mitch White is getting loose just in case the the Mariners tie this ball game. Yeah, or yeah, tie the game, possibly. I wouldn't assume he would come in this ball game if they were leading still. The 0-2. Again, fouled off. Yeah, I mean, even with Green's pitch count at 22, it would be shocking, frankly, for them to take him out with two outs in this inning. Let's say he got the next out. That would be surprising. But Mitch White is warming. Runner on first after the walk. One out. 5-3 Blue Jays. Top of nine. The 0-2. Again, fouled back. They are clearly trying to attack the top part of that zone on Rojas. Four fastballs in a row elevated. I'd probably just try to bounce a curveball here. Alejandro Kirk sets up outside the pitch. Up and in. Missed big with that fastball. Rojas had to dance out of the way. It's one ball and two strikes. Tim Meza is getting loose for the Blue Jays as well. Green's next pitch. Broken bat bouncer to second. Kiner Falefa flips the machete for one. Over to first. Ball game. 4-6-3 double play ends it. The Blue Jays win a series for the first time in 2024. It's 5-3 tonight over the Seattle Mariners. Such a well-played game overall. The offense was great. Chris Bassett was great even chad green at the end of this ball game threw almost 30 pitches he was great chris bassett though he needed this ball game he needed to come in here and throw strikes with his sinker and throw strikes with his curveball and he did that yes he walked four guys but he was all over the strike zone all day long 
A lot of arm side high fastballs in his first two strikes. You didn't see that today. He was pounding the bottom of the strike zone. Chris Bassett needed this game today. We'll recap the line for Chris Bassett and talk about the game a little bit more when we come back and then send you off to a winning edition, a series winning edition of Blue Jays Talk with Blair and Barker. 5-3 win today for Toronto to get back to 500. Stick around. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. At Crown Rust Control, protection runs deep because every Crown Rust Control Center is owned by a local family who cares beyond business. Your Crown Rust Control is 100% committed to their product, to you, to their community, which is your community. Protecting you and what matters to you is equally important as protecting your vehicle. Did you know spring's the best time of year to protect your vehicle from rust? For a special spring offer, find your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center at crown.com. Everyone dreams of owning their own personal slice of heaven. Now you can, thanks to Fixed Rate Pizza by Pizza Pizza. Until the end of 2024, lock into an extra-large four-topping pizza at a fixed price of $17.99. No matter how bad food prices get this year, your pizza price stays. So why not say no to surge pricing and yes to fixed-rate pizza? Order now from Pizza Pizza. Order pizzapizza.ca When you have an iconic look like Danny Jansen, picking new glasses can be tough. Too big. Too small, too cool, too much, too 90s, too futuristic. I think I'm just going to stick with the originals. These are working just fine. He is really seeing the ball well. Your friends will do a double take when they see you in your Danny Jansen new blue replica jersey and glasses. And he's got some style. On Monday, April 29th, the first 15,000 fans will receive a Jano bundle. For tickets, visit BlueJays.com. This is Toronto Blue Jays baseball. Kiermaier going back to the wall. He leaps and he made the catch. On Sportsnet 590, the fan and the Sportsnet radio network. The Blue Jays win the game. They win the series. Go up 2-0 in this three-gamer on the Seattle Mariners with a 5-3 victory at home. At Rogers Center. Appreciate you hanging around with us. We'll get you over to Blair and Barker in just a moment. I'm Ben Schulman alongside Chris LaRue. Show Ali, our host and producer today, Andrew Adams and Tom Young, our technical directors. Toronto winning 5-3. to three. We mentioned it. Chris Bassett, masterful today for the Blue Jays. Six and two-thirds, five hits, one run. Did walk four. Struck out eight. Went to 114 pitches. Threw more pitches today than anyone has thrown in Major League Baseball so far this season. He was huge for the Blue Jays, but, Chris, it was another day where the Blue Jays' offense seemed to really start to get into their stride. They scored early in the third inning on a George Springer RBI single after Dalton Varsho singled and created some havoc on the bases, but the big play that blew it open is our play of the game coming from Bo Bichette. Take a listen. The one-two. High drive. Left field. Way back. Out of here. Second deck blast. Bo Bichette. 3-0 Blue Jays. First home run of the season for Bichette, who reached down for a two-strike slider and smoked that ball out of the park. 431 feet. Well, let's not forget that the Blue Jays did this against one of baseball's best young starters in George Kirby. This guy throws 97 to 99 with sync and incredible command. So for these guys to have these types of games, George Springer was two for five. Justin Turner, I mean, he, it's almost like he's hitting, he's getting two hits or three hits every single day. 
And then obviously Bo Bichette with that big home run. That must have felt good. He put a really, really good swing on that kind of spinning cement mixer slider. But that's what you have to do. If you're a good hitter like Bo Bichette and Vlad, you you have to take advantage of the mistakes. You have to hit George Kirby's mistakes, and that's what he did. It was that spinning slider right over the middle of the plate, and Bo Bichette did not miss it. Some nice bottom-of-the-order contributions or back-half-of-the-order contributions for the Blue Jays as well. Two hits in three trips to the plate for Kevin Biggio, who stole a base and ended up scoring a run today. And how about Isaiah Connor falefa too, who comes up with three hits for the Blue Jays, bumps his average over 300, and starts the game-winning double play. The Blue Jays win 5-3. to three. They score five runs on 11 hits. No errors. Nine left on. Three runs, six hits, two errors, and six left on for Seattle. Toronto went 3-10, for 10, a 300 average with runners in scoring position. Chris Bassett wins to go to 1-2. and two. George Kirby loses to go to 1-2. and two. And Chad Green picks up his second save of the season in front of 31,000, just over that, with 57,000 hot dogs consumed. And, Chris, an exciting one tomorrow. Yusei Kikuchi, coming off a dominant start, is going to go up against another one of the great young pitchers in baseball. Logan Gilbert is on the mound for Seattle as the Blue Jays look for the sweep. Should be a really fun one. Should be a great one. I can't wait to come back. Nice and early, too. Yes, 3.07 <laughs> Eastern. Noon if you're on the West Coast or maybe listening from Seattle. It's the Blue Jays and the Mariners in Game 3 coming up tomorrow on the Sportsnet Radio Network. Really appreciate you tuning in tonight. It was a really fun game, and we're excited to come back here tomorrow for Kikuchi and Gilbert. For our technical directors, Andrew Adams and Tom Young, our host and producer, Show Ali, and my partner, Chris LaRue, I'm Ben Schulman. Thanks so much for listening. We hope to see you tomorrow. And get your calls in because Blue Jays Talk with Blair and Barker starts right now. And allowing two earned runs or fewer than Bassett's 21. Which pitcher would that be? Mm. This tells you how good. Garrett Cole. Bingo, 23. This tells you how good Chris Bassett has been since he's been with the Blue Jays. More to the point. His 115 pitches thrown tonight, this is according to SN Stats, they are the most by any MLB starter in a March-April game since 2021. The Blue Jays, 5-3 winners over the Seattle Mariners, Kevin Barker. My Blue Jays have won a season series. <laughs> admit it. Admit it. You, you had some doubts there. Yeah. Well, look, the, the, look the way at- that... The way that that horrible four and six road trip went, the one where you were basically burying the team because they didn't go six and four. See, that hurts. I'm just saying. That that hurts. I, I, I was talking about mentally building on something that you were working on in spring training, and now you're throwing me under the Greyhound. I'm like, not throwing you under the Greyhound. Yeah, you are. I'm you not, absolutely are. I'm not. You are. No, I'm not throwing say it. You're, I'm just pointing say you're it sorry. out. I, I'm I, sorry. I just said, you know, 90% of baseball is confidence. And when you go four and six and you don't hit, and you get no hit and one hit on the road, probably you're not oozing confidence on the, pl- on no, the I plane think on you, your way you back said to Toronto. Today, That's what I said. If I said, if I remember correctly, you said today 90% of the game is 50% confidence <laughs> is what, is what you said It was the other way today. around. Or 50% of the game is 90% con- confidence. 416 870 star 591 triple a triple six zero five ninety. Bo Bichette hits a home run for the Blue Jays today. No home run About jacket. Time. No home run jacket. Didn't see the home run jacket. I think that's over. Uh, but let's start. Let's start the conversation uh, honestly with with Chris Bassett. Uh, early in the game, he seemed to have some trouble getting the ball down in the zone. But Kevin, uh, you pointed out very early. In the second inning, I was looking, and I know we don't like to look at Velo, but the second inning, Kevin, he his sinker was half a mile an hour to a mile an hour faster. His sweeper was over one mile an hour faster. Slider was over two miles an hour faster. You talked to, I mean, he found that velocity. Not that he, not that he's going to throw a hundred, but he found the velocity he was looking for, didn't he? Did you listen to me today on our show? Whenever you ask me the question of what Chris Bassett has to do today, to that's why I'm teeing you up around. after throwing you under uh, I'm, so, after throwing you under the greyhound. I'm, so, I'm, I'm teeing you up here. Yeah, so you really didn't listen. I mean, I'm I'm sort of used to you not listening to me. What I said was when you asked me that question, I said his sinker and his cutter 
has to be up a tick, which would mean the sinker has to be instead of 89 to 91, it got to be 91 to 93 mm. and occasional 94, 95. That's exactly what we see. Why? You asked, Jeff, should it be 91 to 93? Why would that make it better? Because now when he throws the sweeper 10 times, the slider 10 times, the curveball 10 times, he can get away with bad ones, right? He's not perfect. I mean, he's got a bazillion pitches. Sooner or later, he's going to throw one down the middle. But if I'm throwing 91, 93, and it's moving all over the place, and I can elevate it, and I can throw it down, and I can make you uncomfortable by throwing it in, and, you know, like he does, you know, he starts that cutter at the the front elbow of a right-handed hitter that's a little elevated. Elevated. What do you do with that, right? If it's 93, I'm probably taking it. I'm cheating and I'm opening up the front side. What do you do next? You either throw me the slider or you throw me the sweeper or you can flip that little slow breaking ball. Or if you're left-handed, you can sort of do it backwards, right? Mm. You can throw the split finger, you can throw the slow curve ball. Like you could do a bunch of things, but what you got to do is speed the bat up. You got to tell that hitter, uh oh, I feel frisky with my fastball velocity. And now you got to get it going a little sooner. And now I can throw you whatever I want throw you and i go deep in the game and that's exactly what happened 416-870-0590 star 591 triple a triple six zero five ninety five three the blue jays are undefeated at home and, well they are they're undefeated at home in 20 it, i'm trying to and and you're 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 laughing the blue jays are undefeated at home in 2024 and uh interested in your take on 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 the offense through these first two games are you starting to is this something Something a little more what you expected from the Blue Jays in the year. Uh, want to call us about the uh, the starting pitching as well. I want to know how many of you were surprised that Chris Bassett went out there again. Were you surprised? Yeah, absolutely. But I was I mean, surprised he's 100 too. Hundred years old. A hundred years old. And then what old, we saw yesterday. And he threw a hundred. Absolutely. And John didn't no get question. booed. John didn't get booed this time. Oh, no, I mean, you leave him out there for 115 pitches, you don't get booed, yeah. John made like like five trips to the mound today and didn't get booed. So it, 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 it's all over. Way to go, Toronto. There you go. Hey, uh, the Jays fouled off 26 pitches uh, from George Kirby. Buck mentioned this on the broadcast. And, and it's something Dave Sims, I think, talked about a little bit earlier and we had him on the Mariners announcer. Kevin, how does a guy with that good stuff or with stuff as good as his stuff, have a difficulty finishing guys off? Because it seems this year as if, now again, small sample size, but this is a guy who's considered one of the best young pitchers in baseball. And you you, you saw his stuff today when it was on. It's electric. How, how does he have a difficulty um, finishing off right-handed hitters in particular? Yeah, I used to ask John Gibbons all the time, why does a left-handed hitter not capable of hitting the ball where they ain't standing? Meaning when that guy goes into right field, why can't you just slap it to shortstop? He looked right at me and said, that's not how they made it to the big leagues. <clears throat> George Kirby, we had two guys on today talking about this, says that he's trying to go strike to ball with two strike pitches. And you mentioned why. They've had, what, 27 foul balls? Well, most of those were off of George Kirby. And the reason why that is, is when you get to two strikes, the first thing your internal clock is telling you is to let it travel, and this guy's going to throw you strikes. He ain't going to go strike the ball. Just for whatever reason, the breaking ball, the slider, the secondary stuff, he just doesn't want to do it that way. He wants to try and live on the corners and get some outs that way instead of having seven or eight or nine, ten punch outs. So, Give the Blue Jays credit, right? They understood that going in. They understood that a guy's trying to do that. If you let it travel, you can slap that off. You can live to fight another pitch. And then when you get your good one, sort of like Bo, sort of like George Springer, you don't miss it. You can help your team win a baseball game. Yeah. So, yeah, give the Blue Jays credit. They battled, and that's exactly what you're supposed to do. You battle to, uh, when you get to those counts where you have to battle. Fight off the pitcher's pitches. Get yours. When you get it, don't miss it. That's what they did. Yeah, that third inning was uh, quite a grind uh, for a good word. George Kirby. Uh, the Bach on uh, the with with Dalton Varsho at uh, at first base, balking after two disengagements, it really surprised me. I you just don't. I know it's early in the year, but you, you know you don't you don't expect that. I, at least I don't expect that from a guy, Kevin. They stole a couple of bases this and. And and Craig Biggio's stolen base turns out to be important because he comes in to score uh, on uh, Isaiah Kiner Falefa's double. He, he probably would. He might have scored from first in that anyhow. But the point is, 
one of the things we know the Jays wanted to do when they talked about building that home field advantage is try to create kind of a sense of dynamism that wasn't there last year. And this team was boring offensively at times last year. Yeah. Um, today seemed to be a bit of the, 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 the template, you know, it, I, I'm not saying that. I don't know. I don't know how George Kirby's wired. I'm not saying they got in his head, but I am saying that that was a, an interesting inning from a guy who is, is considered one of the elite young pitchers in baseball. Yeah, I think it's a guy trying to work on something, an organization telling him to take it to the next level. You're going to have to have something that goes strike to ball, right? Two strikes. Mm -hmm. It's <laughs> action in three pitches. Whenever you don't get that, you sort of get those Springer at bats, those Bo Bichette at bats where, you know, they're not real afraid of your secondary stuff because they know you're going to throw it for strikes, right? You right. travel, you fight it off. Maybe he spins one that I can catch out front because I got a really good two strike approach, Bo Bichette. Or if you're George Springer, right? You're not trying to do too much. Mm -hmm. You're fighting it off because you know he's going to be around the strike zone it's a great approach i do want to give dalton bar show base running yes absolutely Kuda, kudos do you know how hard it is to run the bases when offensively you have not gotten off to the start that you want to get off to it is very hard to separate that part of your game and then when you're in another part of your game actually forget about what you're not doing well and for him to be able to freeze take a step back on the line drive and go to home mm -hmm. as much as we complain at least me about how bad the base running is man that's great stuff if you're a kid watching that Go back and just rewind it and watch it over again. Rewind it and watch it over again. That's something special. It is a winning edition of Blue Jays Talk on the Sportsnet Radio Network. 5-3, the Blue Jays beating the Seattle Mariners. Do not forget tomorrow's third and final game of the series. It is a 3:07 start. Blair and Barker will be on with an hour-long pregame show before the game. We will we'll be doing Blue Jays Talk after the game live on uh, radio and TV. Uh, we are doing going to do the same thing we did last week. We'll solicit your voice mails. You can call the back leg line. The number is 416-413-3959. Or tomorrow you can text us at 590-590 during the game, and uh, we will get around to answering your questions. But for now, let's go to Jim in Hamilton. Gentlemen, good evening. Good evening. Jeff? As usual, you're wrong. I agree with Kevin. Yes. That's why when All I All right, called, uh, Jim, thanks for calling. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. That's why when I said before the season started, they needed to go on the road and come back home 7-3, and three, hit the ground running. They're undefeated that's, at home. And that's before they came home, the road trip, right? Yeah, but they're undefeated. The road, the, 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 clearly the 4-6 and six road trip didn't matter to them. They're undefeated at home. Well, without Schneider's... And the blessing of the baseball gods, the road trip would have been three and seven. I'm a little dyslexic. Kevin might be a little <laughs> dyslexic too when he said six and four and they came back four and six. <clears throat> Either way you cut it, Jeff, I'm sorry you were wrong. Five and five didn't cut it. Anyway, moving on. Bassett. I saw him in the first inning uh, after the top of the first. He was rub rubbing the top of his forearm. And then when they did the camera shot into the dugout with. Uh, Pete and the trainer, the trainer also pointed to the top of the forearm as well. Right. I don't know if there's any concern with that, but my other question is about the pitch com. Last game that Bassett started, um, they were fumbling around with the pitch com, and his next pitch wasn't good. Tonight, it was a similar situation. They got it straightened out. Should Bassett just call the game from the beginning and don't worry what? Kirk is calling. I'm going to hang up and listen to your answer. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Thanks, Jim. Uh, first of all, about Chris Bassett. Yeah, we all saw the the camera shot. Um, he threw 115 pitches, so I would I would imagine I would imagine he was okay. Um, and I'm not saying that facetiously. We saw him go down in the dugout. Uh, or I should say, go down to the clubhouse. I think between the third and fourth inning. But I mean, he has. And and Dan and Buck both said that's not unusual. He has. I mean, you'll see pitchers. Go, how maybe they go down to, you know, right? Take yep. care of nature's affairs uh, during the game. So it's not entirely unusual to see a, a dude go into the clubhouse. But yeah, there was obviously there was some discussion about something. Maybe uh, when we get John Schneider's uh, post game uh, commentary, post game interview, we'll be able to find out. I you know again, 115 pitches. Uh, 
No starters, no major league starters throwing that many pitches in a March-April game since 2021. That would suggest to me that Chris Bassett was okay. Um, yeah, and I'm uh, uh, dealing with the pitch comp. I'm under the impression the people that I've talked to he calls the game anyway. Yeah, like it, it's it's basically he's in agreement. He sort of knows what he's throwing. If Kirk, he's pushing the button right. He's agreeing with it. If he's not, that's why you see him sort of fumbling around trying There's, to, and it goes five, four, three, and he hadn't kicked his leg yet until he gets to two seconds. Like he's, you know, it's, I don't think he really cares about that pitch clock anymore. Like I'm, he's going to get his pitch. And if it's two, one, I don't think he really minds about that. He's not going to be in too big of a hurry. No. And I'll tell you what else. And, and, uh, and John Schneider talked about this last year in spring training and, it's something I've always kind of kept in the back of, back of my head. And that is that Chris Bassett is so smart. He can eventually, and this was John talking last year. He said, I can see a time where he will turn the pitch calm into a weapon for him and the pitch clock into a weapon for him. I mean, you saw, you've seen him in the mound today. He's, he's, he, He's he's squatting on the mound at one point. I I think a lot of the head shaking, the nodding, and all that. Yeah, I think a lot of that is designed to throw off the hitter a lot of the time. I, and also, I think sometimes when his split fingers working and he's got four secondary yes. pitches to go to, it's real hard for Kirky to guess the right sure one. Sure, it is. I mean, it's just you're trying to guess along with him what he's thinking and you know the feel and look at how it looks coming off the finger. It's just sometimes it takes a little bit of time. But I'd say this: whenever we have John on this week, Jim. We will ask about the pitch clock. Yes, and, we and will. That fumbling around pitch and seeing is what he was calm. talking about. I, I, I apologize, yeah. but we will we will ask about that and see what his answer is. Yeah, that is, uh, and of course we know that um, Chris Bassett was one of the one of the pitchers who, in spring training, um, criti- I, I would say criticized was uh, he hated it. He hate well he he there hate, it is. he hated, he, hated he, it. He, he, I, he also really was up was annoyed that they cut. You know, two more seconds off the uh, off the off the pitch clock itself. But I think Jim's point was about pitch con. But anyhow, you're you're right. You're absolutely right. We'll talk to uh, we'll talk to John Schneider about Jeff, that. You, you think you think about this? A hitter has two less seconds to guess along with Chris Bassett. Yeah, I think just, you just ponder on that for a second. All the things that are going yep. on in the quadrants and the different speeds and and as much as it's no longer see ball hit ball anymore as a hitter, you're trying to guess along and you got two fewer seconds to try and figure it out. Good luck. Kevin, you've you've played <laughs> the game. Luck. I got to think that Chris Bassett's a type of guy who might be able to lull you to sleep. And I don't mean that as I I I do not mean that as an insult, but I'm saying you watch him on the mound it's kind of languid, you know. There's that, uh, just sort of that, sort of slow, low energy approach. And these are all positives. I'm saying this is all positives. Um, I, I would think he would be a difficult guy to hit against, especially you know the Mariners are scuffling right now. Especially if you're a scuffling team, to see a guy yeah, like been- that. He's very good at reading bats, right? If you look late, he's going to throw you something slower. If you look like you're out in front, he'll speed you up with a fastball. He'll elevate it. He'll throw it at your front elbow like he's doing things to you yep. to sort of screw with your mind, trying to outthink you. And most of the time, he's really good at it. 416 590 star 591 888 The Blue Jays have beaten the Seattle Mariners. They have won the first two games of this homestand game three is tomorrow a 307 first pitch john schneider was asked about chris bassett's outing we'll hear from the skipper when we come back it's blue jays talk with blair and barker on the sportsnet radio network Timber Mart is Canada's building center, a solid neighbor to call upon when you've got a job to do. Your dependable home improvement store that offers the added value of air miles, reward miles with every purchase of $15 or more. Visit TimberMart.ca. He doesn't throw fastballs. He throws fuego. He has the focus and agility of a Shaolin monk. He's not just a pitcher. He's a machine. He defends the field. And our city's honor. He is one of the best defensively out of the mill. Jose Barrios is as good as gold. Celebrate Jose's golden accomplishment with the Jose Barrios Gold Glove Bobblehead. Friday, April 12th. For tickets, visit BlueJays.com. 
At Crown Rust Control Center, protection runs deep because every Crown Rust Control Center is owned by a local family who cares beyond business. Your Crown Rust Control Center is 100% committed to their product, to you, to their community, which is your community. Protecting you and what matters to you is equally important as protecting your vehicle. Did you know spring's the best time of year to protect your vehicle from rust? For a special spring offer, find your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center at crown.com. Everyone dreams of owning their own personal slice of heaven. Now you can, thanks to Fixed Rate Pizza by Pizza Pizza. Until the end of 2024, lock into an extra-large four-topping pizza at a fixed price of $17.99. No matter how bad food prices get this year, your pizza price stays. So why not say no to surge pricing and yes to fixed rate pizza? Order now from Pizza Pizza. Order pizza pizza. That's CA. The race is on. Get ready for the rush on Sportsnet. It's getting close to playoff time. And here we go. This is the stretch drive. You cannot let down your guard. The time when every game and every point can make all the difference. If you get in, you can win. The rush to the playoffs is on. Don't miss all the NHL action on Sportsnet. Here for hockey. Are you watching this? Watch on Sportsnet or stream on Sportsnet Plus. We're two men and a truck. And we've got lots of men and lots of trucks. Whether you're planning a move to a new home or to a new office down the hall, big or small, we move them all. We even sell packing and moving supplies. But no matter what you need, we'll do it with a smile. With a 96% referral rating and the professionalism you can trust, the choice is simple. So when you're planning your next move, call Two Men and a Truck. Two Men and a Truck, the movers who care. Timber Mart always has plans to help you with your plans. Your home, your cottage, your garage, whatever needs your attention first, check the most visited spot on our website for ready-to-order plans to get the job done with Canada's Building Center. Visit TimberMart.ca. This is Jose Berrios, and you're listening to Toronto Blue Jays Baseball on the Sportnet Radio Network. Kind of total command, and he wanted to get through that inning. Um, that was about as far as we wanted to go with him in terms of pitches. But, I mean, his stuff today executed it really well, whether it was fastball cutter, split, 